Well, hello, everybody. I guess I should tell you that there is a recording in progress. So let me check the camera here for a second. Yeah, there we go. All right. So um, this is being recorded. It's kind of fun, right? Um, I'm excited about it. Uh, and I thank you all for being here today. Uh, we've got quite the crowd as, as uh, usual. This is good. Um, I am honored by the fact that you uh, took a little time out of your day to, to uh, come attend. Um, this is kind of a fun uh, webinar for me. I, I've spent, of course, way too much time on it, uh, but, but it really is something that I, that I hope you find practical. So, so let's go ahead and get the admonitions out of the, out of the way. We're going to start off with that this is the Greater San Diego Association of Realtors, and my name is Kevin Burke. There is my telephone number. There is my email address. Um, usually better to email me, but you know we'll, we'll figure that out at some point. I'd rather speak with you, of course, but uh, maybe we have to set up a time. So, uh, um, all right. So I have some credentials, I guess, that make me qualified to speak about the subject matter. Um, been in real estate for God, almost forty-five years. Let's see, forty-four years now, uh, and. Uh, what else? Anything else in there is important? Notice on the right hand side, we talk about risk management and that, that's kind of the important kind of my theme today. I want you to have I, I want you to do what the subject matter is today. But at the same time, I want you to be safe. I really do. I want you to be OK. All right. And so risk management has been my game for decades. And uh, hopefully uh, you can find some benefit from that as well. We're we're probably going to be talking about things that appear to be legal. I am not a practicing attorney. I had no interest whatsoever. I knew my last year of law school, there was no way I was going to practice law. I just, I think I'm just having way too much fun. And of course, at this point, I was halfway through my career and I, and I didn't know that at the time, of course, but uh, I, I, I continued in real estate and I found it to have really changed the way I've done my business. So um, I do a lot of trial work. It's limited to testifying as an expert witness, um, standard of care, agents duties of inspection and disclosure, market conditions uh, in San Diego County at least, um, conversation not intended to be a substitute for the advice of your broker, nor for that of your attorney. Please consult with them as appropriate. You're paying them to be there. They want to talk with you. I know that in uh, Linda's brokerage, the ones she worries about the most are the ones that we never hear from. So, you know, that, that's the ones that are usually the problem. So our webinars are definitely intended to be interactive. You, you really help me out. You help shape the direction that we're going to go, even though I've already got a lot of stuff prepared. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, questions that you ask are always good. Um, so please utilize the Q&A button uh, to ask questions or offer input. I do look forward to hearing from you. Um, today, we're going to talk about open house success. Um, first of all, I want you to, to do it. I want you to have fun doing it. Uh, and, and I want you to safely leave the open house, that kind of thing. But I'm going to give you some ideas today that are going to cost you next to nothing. Um, and, and they're going to be fun to do. So let's talk a little bit about that. That's today. We're going to do that from 10 until noon. Um, and then this afternoon, we'll be talking about residential property management. Again, check with your broker to see if they even allow it. But but uh, we're going to talk about the beginning. And then at some point, we're going to have to do the forms class again, because there's a lot of new forms out there. That'll be from two to four. Um, and then on Thursday, we're going to be doing maintaining records, reducing risk, one of my specialties, right? Uh, I really think that, you know, we have, it's, easy for us in this business. The, the two things we always worry about, right? We worry about the DRE and we worry about the lawyers. And I'm going to tell you something. If you know how to maintain records, uh, you're probably the only one doing it. Okay. And so, and, and plus your broker needs to have them as well. So we'll talk about that all um, Thursday morning. And then in the afternoon, we're going to talk about all of the things that get me into court. And those are usually disclosures or lack thereof. Okay. We, we fail to disclose things. We don't tell people things. Uh, if I don't tell them this, they won't buy the house. It's like, well, maybe that's the number one reason to tell them. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. In the immortal words of Pete Selecki, he says, you know, if you tell them and they decide not to buy the house, then maybe you didn't want that buyer in the first place. Right. Because, you know, they decided to exit the transaction over something that you told them about. That's, you know, uh, maybe they were looking to set you up. So anyway, that being said, now I'm getting worried because I think my clock is telling me it is one o'clock, right? Or, or 10 o'clock, I think. Yep. Okay, good, good. All right. So member benefits today, we're going to be speaking about open house success, okay? And so I like to quote Albert Einstein uh, only because it makes me look important, but he coined the term, the definition of insanity 
it is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Uh, and, and I really take heart to that, right? So sometimes you and I, we keep doing things the way that we have always done them. And the, and the one thing that worries me the most in, in my business is, you know, and again, I'm telling you this from 44 years of experience, right? But, but, you know, when people say, well, that's not the way we always used to do it. And it's like, yeah, I know, but now we have the new way that we're, we're used, that we're going to do it, right? And so the hardest thing for us, of course, as real estate agents is change um, because we just kind of get in a pattern of how we're going to do things. Uh, and, and then we find comfort in that. And so unfortunately, we don't grow from that. So we want to learn how to grow. And so sometimes we keep doing things the way that we've always done them. And... Uh, and and uh, and again, expect a, a different result. And so that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? Okay, all right. Okay, um, uh, good. I just had a phone call, which tells me, ho hopefully you all can hear me okay, right? If anybody can't hear me, would you, you know, well, I guess you wouldn't be able to tell me that. <laughs> you wouldn't even hear me tell you, you know, what we're doing. So uh, so anyway, uh, good, good start there. Uh, let's see, uh, hi, Holly, welcome back. Lena, hi, hi, Linda. Uh, it's like uh, romper room all over again. I love it. Thank you all for being here. If you have always done open houses in a certain way, may I ask you just keep your mind open for something a little bit different. And we're going to talk about some of those ideas here today. So when I'm holding an open house, like real estate, it's not a passive business, right? And so I want to be actively involved, actively engaged in the process of doing my open house. I don't want to just assume that it just kind of does itself, right? Um, and, and I don't, I want to get out of that habit of, you know, when do you do your open house? Uh, I do my open house from one to four on Sunday. And I always say, why? In fact, as I'm talking here, I'm thinking about stuff I wish I'd added to the print version of this. But, but you know, why do you do it from one to four on Sunday? Well, well, because everybody does it one to four on Sunday. And I said, well, that's the reason not to do it from one to four on Sunday, right? And so, you know, I, I had a business partner. His name was Bill Russell, not not the basketball player. Bill was a super guy. He's very bright. Um, and uh, and we would do our open houses. Uh, we would do them uh, from uh, ten o'clock in the morning until seven o'clock at night. Now people. People go, oh my God, I can never do that. I mean, it almost starting to look like a job, right? Well, what we would do is one of us would get there from 10 to one, and then both of us would be there from four to seven, or four, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 10 to one. And then both of us would be there from one to four, anticipating a rush. And then and then the, the one that had gotten there early would leave and the other one would stay until seven o'clock. Um, and the reason we did that was that we found that, that in our open house, if we look at that bracket of one to four, the majority of people come in at 3.30. Right. Or the majority of people come in right at one, you know, one o'clock to one thirty. They're waiting at the door for you. Right. And so we realized that if we would open a little bit earlier and then we would uh, stay a little bit later, we would get more people, you know, we, because they were they were out there. Right. And so we got to a point where we morphed away from doing 10 to seven. Instead, we did 10 to one and four to seven. Now, remember, everybody else is doing them from one to four. So if you like to be out there when everybody else is doing them and you're just taking the, you know, the also rams, you know, the, the ones that come into your house because they escaped the last real estate agent. You know, I always say people that if you're not a good closer, you don't want you don't want to be there one to four. You know, from 10 to one, they don't have anybody else to talk to because you're the only game in town. And from four to seven and, and folks, you know, it, it is May. It's the middle of May. Right. In fact, I think it's exact middle of May uh, to, uh, uh, today is right because it's 31 days in may right so we're exactly in the middle of may and so we're seeing that sunsets are happening later in the day people think the days get shorter they're actually the same you know uh, number of hours 24 hours right it's just that that you know the the amount of daylight increases so the sun gets up you know the sun rises earlier it sets later um and so that's what leads itself perfectly for you know those of us who don't sleep um to be able to do our how, how open house at least until seven so the theory is and again i live in del mar so i'm just going to make an application here but but from 10 to 1 on sunday they've gone to church now they're coming back they're getting ready to go to the beach they stop by the open house from one to four, they're at the beach, right? Four to seven, they're on their way home from the beach and they see the open house and they stop at the open house. So I just want you to think outside of that, that uh, envelope a little bit. Think outside the bubble. 
And think about when do your clients come around, okay? And again, I think Sunday, I think Sunday's a good day to hold an open house, but I think you really need to be focusing on Friday and Monday. And, the, and why is that? Well, the reason is that because on Friday and Monday, Fridays and Mondays are the days that the, that the visitors uh, either uh, come in or leave. Right. And so they, they come in on 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 uh, Thursday or Friday uh, to do that job interview um, and then they stick around for the weekend, maybe. But but for Friday, for sure, I'm going to get traffic now. And, and same principle applies to Monday. I'm going to get traffic on Monday that I'm not going to get on Sunday. So what do you get when you do your open house on Sunday? Everybody heads up. What do you get? You get the looky lose. Right. And if it's the first open house for this property, you get all the neighbors. All right. And so. I'm thinking that what you need to do is you need to cater to the people that are really serious about buying houses. And somebody that comes into your open house on Friday or on Monday, I get the fact that you won't have a lot of traffic, okay? If you've got 50 people at your open house on Sunday, which you should be getting, 50 people, you're probably only going to get five on Friday and Monday. But of those five, probably three or four of those are going to buy something, right? And why? Because they're there to buy property. OK, we already know that floor time doesn't work. Most brokerages have gotten rid of that. Um, we know that they're able to find things on the Internet, but there's nothing that replaces the eye to eye contact that you get when that visitor comes into your open house. And that's why I'm telling you, you know, mix it up a little bit. OK, I know I'm not going to get the same amount of traffic on Saturday. I know I'm not going to get the same amount of traffic on Friday or Monday. OK, I'll get great traffic on Sunday, but it's my job to get great traffic. Or is my job to sell houses? And are they going to buy the house that they're coming in on? 0.08% of the time, they will buy the house that, that they come in on, okay? So your, your numbers are, are dismal. You're, you need to be working on what to do with them when they've come to you, right? I mean, and we're going to talk about getting them to come to you, but you need to be working on that because you need to be focusing on the real goal, which is selling houses. It's your job. OK, um, so again, I want to be where the action is. Right. I want to be where things are. You know, Wayne Gretzky said it. I quote him all the time. Yes. You, know, uh, you know, what was the secret of your success? You know, uh, and people, you know, is it, is it knowing how to get to the puck? And his answer is no, it's knowing where the puck is going to be. Right. And so I, I go, wow, that is brilliant. I mean, if you think about it. So I want to know where they're going to be. And I know that my one to four, I may get some of the, you know, the ones that escaped everybody else. But at the same time, my my uh, my real successful open house is probably going to be um, in the period uh, between. Uh, um, uh, whoops, uh, just uh, uh, hold on a second. I think somebody's trying to get in the webinar. Nope. OK, good. All right. All right. So anyway, um, so so anyway, look at my theory. My theory is that if you're going to be doing uh, an open house, you want to do it when it is the most productive. Um, and I want to say in passing also, if you're going to do an open house and we talk about mastering the farm and I think we're doing that next week. OK, how to master your farm. I think you do everything in your farm. And so I think you also do open houses in your farm. OK, so if you think about it for a second, when when where are you trying to get your clients? You're trying to get them where you're working, where your farm is. So if today you're going to do an open house and it's in Bonzel, you know, and then tomorrow your open house is in in uh, La Mesa. And then the next day it's in Escondido. And then the next day it's in Chula Vista. You see what I'm doing? I'm going to the four corners, right? And so I'm never going to become known in my area if I, if I, if I keep doing that. I want to do the open houses where I live or where I want to live, okay? So where I want to be making my money, where I want my business uh, to be, where I want my referral business to be. Hey, listen, I move like everybody else does. And they follow me. Right. So, you know, I create a really good foundation wherever I'm living. And then as I move to another house, a bigger house, nicer house, you know, whatever, can't get any closer to the ocean than I am. But, you know, when I move to that house, then then, you know, people are going to follow me uh, to that as well. And so I want that to happen for you. But if you're doing one in Bonzel and then you're doing the one in La Mesa, the, the people in La Mesa is a whole it's a whole refreshing new thing. Now, I've had some people tell me, oh, yeah, I want to do it at places like that because I get, you know, different people, new people, and all that kind of stuff. OK, I'm good with it. Right. But, you know, if I want to focus on my core of business, I want to focus where I live or where I want to live. Is everybody good? OK, so kind of an important concept. All right. Uh, but if I'm scattered all over the four winds or the four corners, as I say, then, you know, nobody's going to know who I am. All right. And I want to be the mayor. 
okay, I want to be the mayor of that town. And I should have pulled up my picture. My, my, I was, I'm, I'm at NAR in uh, DC last week. Um, and, and I got, they, they printed my name tag and somewhere uh, decades ago, somebody decided that I was the mayor. So, you know, if you want a copy of it, send me an email, I'll send you a copy of my the mayor name badge. But anyway, so I don't know how to get rid of it, but it's cool. Okay. All right. So that being said, uh, let's move a little bit farther forward. So let's put this another way. Real estate is a full contact sport. It really is. It is not a passive business. It, it can't be. It's got to be one of those reach out to other people to do business. It cannot be a passive business. Is everybody okay with that? I mean, it's really, really important. It is a full contact sport, all right? So the more energy that you put into doing your open house, the more likely you will have a positive outcome really, really clear. Now, let me tell you what I see in open houses. So, you know, having been management at, at three of the largest brokerages in San Diego County for, for quite some time, actually, a couple of decades, um, you know, I, I've seen people come into the into the office and I happen to be there on a Sunday because, you know, I don't have anything else to do, right? So I'm in there on a Sunday and at right about 1.30, 1.45, a whole bunch of people come running in and, and, and they're running around looking for open house signs, right? Okay, now, what was that? Sunday, one to four, I'm trying to think. But, but you're picking up your signs at 1.30, 145, right? And so they get their signs and they take off, they go to do their open house. I don't know how well they do. I don't know if they were marketing the property. I'm going to show you some really cool ways to market this property here in a minute. Okay. But, but, you know, that, <coughs> excuse me, then right around 3.30, 3.45, they're turning all the lights off. Right? Why? Because they're shutting it down. Why? Because there's nobody else coming in. Remember what I said earlier? My my the most of my traffic comes in 3:30 to 4 and later. Right? If I close at 4, I'm missing all those other people. Okay. But but they're just starting to come in at 3:30. Right? And then and you didn't get there until 1:30 or 2 o'clock. And so you know if you if you actually expect that to be a productive open house. God love you. Remember, we all get into real estate because we want to make millions of dollars every year. I don't think you're going to do it on, on two hours a weekend. OK, I don't think that's going to happen. If it was the case, then we'd all be multimillionaires. Right. OK. And, and I could use the company, actually. So so anyway, you're, you're more likely to have a positive outcome. So Joe Jelly, who I consider the father, uh, the grandfather, at least of San Diego real estate. Right. He used to say, if you are flat broken out of money, you, you do open houses seven days a week. I knew guys like Charlie Romano and, and Scott Scholl and, and uh, John Kerry and some of these guys, they were doing open houses every weekend, right? You know, they, they, they just knew that that was going to produce something and they didn't care what anybody else was doing. And I've never cared, you know, whatever everybody else is doing, that's fine for them. God love them, but I'm going to do what, what I know is going to be successful. And so I'm giving you the secrets of my success. Do your open houses seven days a week. Now, if you can't do seven days a week, then do six do five, but if you're doing zero, then you need to work your way up. You, you follow what I'm saying? And again, we want to be productive open houses. So I would probably on the weekends do that 10 to one, four to seven thing. And then on, on the Friday and Saturday, I would probably do you know a regular one to four or one to five. Uh, and, and oh, by the way, I'm the only one doing them. Okay, so again, I always, you know, coach says hit it where they ain't, right? Yogi Berra says hit it where they ain't. I want to do it when nobody else is out there. I'm going to get it, you know, I'm going to get everybody. I get it. Maybe only three people, but if all three of those people buy houses from me, I've got a, a winning track record. You know, that Sunday open house from one to four, when you get slammed, you got 30 people coming through, you know, you got to identify really quickly which ones of those are realistically going to be buying or, or even selling a house, right? Because remember what I said earlier about that if it's the first open house for that house, you're going to get all the neighbors coming in. And so you want to be talking to the neighbors. I've had people say, I don't want to talk to the neighbors. Like, you got to be kidding me, right? You know, they're going, to, they're going to help find people that want to live in the neighborhood with them, people they want to have live in the neighborhood with them. Okay, no fair housing issues there. They're making that choice, right? Let them find people to help you to buy that house or to sell that house. Okay, so, so I think that's kind of important. So Joe said, do open houses seven days a week. And, and I believe in, in what he said, okay? And, and I've been very successful doing it, all right? So uh, in, in fact, when I was uh, uh, teaching the, the um, open house, uh, we had an open house class uh, with the rock people. It was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It was three days of teaching all the stuff you need to know about doing open houses. And I'm gonna have a ton of material here for you that if you want it, you're just gonna send me an email and I'll send it all to you, okay? So let's talk about the three stages of open houses. We're gonna talk about the, 
before, we're going to talk about the during, and we're going to talk about the after of the open house. And so we're going to fly on through this um, because I'm already worried about my time. Okay, so it's all in the preparation. This is the most important thing that you do is prepare for the open house. Remember that person that came flying into the office looking for open house signs at 130, 145? Are they telling you they prepared for the open house? Are they telling you they did anything in preparation for the open house? Probably not. OK, but they but they expect to make a million dollars this weekend. OK, all right. And then, of course, in their brain, they're thinking I only need one. OK, I'm good with that. Maybe only one is all you need, but I need five because I know I'm probably going to close three of them. Right. But if I'm only looking for one, I'll probably stop at one and I'm not interested in stopping at one. Everybody good. The time and energy that you spend in preparation makes all the difference in the outcome. And so that's why we want to talk about the before. So let's talk about the before. Let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, confirm with your broker. You need to make sure that you double check with your broker about marketing pieces. You know, what are you doing uh, for marketing? Is it going to be uh, office compliant, DRE compliant, NAR code of ethics compliant, any fair housing issues, things like that? You know, in our office, everybody sends everything to me. I proof it um, and, and I let them know whether it's going to be a problem or not. And I've had some things where I've said, no, nope, you may not do that. But yeah, I know you didn't intend anything by it, but, but it sounds this way. And I don't want that to happen. So confirm with your broker those marketing pieces that you're going to do and also talk with your broker and this is important because this is the this is the rage right now is well I don't have any listings so I guess I don't have to work this weekend no uh, I don't have any listings maybe I'll hold somebody else's uh, listing within the office maybe I can do that right a lot of listing agents don't like hold their own stuff open and, all right I get it okay um, but but when you're doing an open house for another broker um, this is this is a major concern. All right. So, for example, you're with the rock people and you go to the blue people and you say, I want can I do one of your open houses for you? And they say, OK. And, and, and again, I would get that in writing. I would I would get it from the broker because remember, the broker is the one that has the listing. OK, and most times they're just going to try to solicit you. But I get that. But but I'm going to get permission in order to hold somebody else's property, I'm just like I would if I was going to advertise their property for sale. I need to have something in writing from them that says that it's OK. All right. Now, many a time I've done that myself. And the other broker said, well, maybe, maybe I should do it open myself. I go, well, go for it, right? And then they do, right? Of course, they spend an hour there and then they leave, right? But, but you know, at the end of the day, I want to try to be as productive as I can. But when I am doing open houses for other brokers, remember the DRE has said there may be some potential issues with undisclosed agency. So, you know, the, the, the for sale sign out front is the, is the, uh, the blue people. You're with the rock people. Uh, people come into the house assuming that you are the seller's broker when in fact you are not. And so I'm going to show you some ways to get around that. Um, but again, check with your broker. Make sure your broker is OK with you doing open houses uh, for other brokers. And then make sure that the other broker is OK with you doing an open house for them. All right. OK. All right. So. And I'm going to show you in a minute some fixes to this that will, will save you a lot of trouble. But that undisclosed agency is a big deal. And the DRE is pouncing on it right now. OK, so it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of tough. So Google the neighborhood. I, I, I didn't have a better word for you, but, you know, research the neighborhood. Look it up. Try to find things. I mean, I use Brave, uh, you know, uh, internet platform, um, uh, browser, I guess you call it, right? Um, you can use Firefox, whatever, whatever you want to do, but you need to look the neighborhood up, find out all about the neighborhood. And again, today we're going to talk about a lot of things, including your safety and, and safety of the property and, and things like that. But, but I want to Google the neighborhood to get an idea of what I'm doing. All right. Okay. And get an idea of if I even want to do that neighborhood. Again, I think you should be doing your own neighborhood. That's kind of my thing, but wherever you're going to go, know the neighborhood. That's important, just like you would pull up a CMA or something about the neighborhood so that you could talk intelligently about properties that are for sale and, and things like that. OK, so so, you know, that's your job. Your job is to discuss the market. All right. So um, and, and by the way, I say this in my in my other uh, uh, webinars, and that is, you know, what's the number one question that people are going to ask you? It's all whoops. It's almost always going to be how is the market? So I always tell people, I say, well, you know, if, if you're if you're concerned about what am I going to say? Hi, Renee. 
Uh, what am I going to say when they ask me a question? Well, then let me ask you this. What question do you think they're going to ask you? And the answer is, how's the market? So that's a great time for you to research the market, perhaps. Um, but remember, I and, I and I'm big on the market, right? I'm always following the market. I think we're in the best market we've ever had, and, and it continues to be. And, and I don't care what they're doing in Illinois and stuff. You know, and I just care about San Diego, which is a microeconomy. But I'm always thinking about the fact of how good my market always is. And I, I was at the doctor's yesterday. Yesterday and, and the doctor asked me, he said, so how's the real estate market? You know, it's like, how did you know I was in real estate? And he goes, your shirt? And I go, duh. You know, I walked into the office and the receptionist said, oh, hi, Mr. Burke. And I go, how did you know I was Mr. Burke? And they said, your shirt? <sighs> okay, because I'm a walking billboard, aren't I? Okay, so but anyway, the doctor said, how's the market? And I told him, I said, you know, I have been doing this. I've been doing this for 44 years. I've never experienced a different market. I'm always in the same market because I don't pay attention to the papers and, and the news. They're just trying to, anybody remember the National Enquirer? You know, not that that was a bad thing, but it just seems to me that I don't see any really happy stuff. You know, the, the worst day for newspaper purchases in San Diego County is when they put the flower fields up in uh, Carlsbad on the front page, right? It's like, we don't want to see the nice stuff. So anyway, um, so I don't do that kind of thing, okay? But how's the market? Mark's doing great for me, always is. My buyers, my sellers love it. It doesn't matter which one you are. They'll get you into a conversation. Isn't it a seller's market or isn't it a buyer's market? And the answer is always yes, okay? So, so again, back to my Google the neighborhood before I get too far offline. Uh, Google the neighborhood, find out what's going on in there, right? And be specific. Run the Fast Stats program, right? If you go into SDAR, uh, um, SDR's website, you can pull up Fast Stats and you can look up that zip code. And so, you know, if that, especially if that's your neighborhood, it's going to be very, very important and have that sheet with you. And I'm going to talk to you about how to have those sheets with you so that people don't take off with them. Okay. All right. Check out the neighborhood visually. I think you should drive it. I think you should, you know, literally figure out what way you're going to bring people in. Where are you going to put your signs? This is going to be important in a minute. Okay. Where are you going to put your signs to get the best traffic to the property. We're not hiding things about the neighborhood. We're just trying to find the best route to get there. Okay. All right. And so we're going to, this is going to become important for us. All right. But let's talk about your safety for a second. So prepare an escape route, perhaps. Uh, for example, the fires in October, I remember, I'll never forget the fires of October 13th. We've had the October, October of 17 fires. You know, we always have these Santa Ana things. Do you have a way to get out of the neighborhood? There's a lot of reasons for why you want, might want to get out of a neighborhood. A fire is a good one. Okay. All right. Um, from the house itself, from the neighborhood itself, you might have to, and you might have to have an escape route, but, but also you need to know the neighborhood well enough that if it had like a lot of twists and turns to get to the open house, then, you know, you need, might need to help people try to get out again when they're trying to head home. Okay. How do we get the freeway from here? I get those questions a lot. All right. Make sure that you have your reliable cell phone. Now I say reliable. Okay. There's a lot of factors involved in, in your cell phone. And one of them is your safety. Okay. So, so make sure that it has signal strength at the property. So you should be visiting the property before the open house on Sunday, not, you know, hair on fire coming in that day. Okay. But I think you should drive by, you know, pull up the front, check your cell phone strength. Are you going to have enough signal? Okay. For a lot of reasons, you know, you might not, you might need to get a hold of somebody. It might, you know, be concerned about something. There's a million things, get a hold of the listing agent, whatever. Okay. Make sure that it is fully charged. Keep it in your possession at all times. All right. And so, you know, we, we talk about that. Carry on a conversation. If you if you feel for the for a moment that your maybe your safety is being compromised, then you need to have the cell phone with you and you might even pretend to be on a call. Um, and if you really are on a call, you should have somebody that's available to take your call for you, right? You know, in case something's going on. But if you're going to be on that call, make sure that the person with you who may be causing you the anxiety can hear that there's somebody on the line listening to the conversation, and they're going to assume that that person knows where you are right now, okay? So, so we just want to make sure we get rid of a lot of the, the negative pop possibilities of things that could happen at the open house. I don't think any of us are naive enough to hopefully not naive enough to think that the open house is the safest thing that you ever do. You know, we have people turning up, you know, 
bad things happen, okay? Especially when you're alone. And we'll talk about being alone in a minute. So make sure the receiver can hear the conversation. Did you notify someone that you will be at the open house, okay? So like if I'm holding an open house, you know, Linda, I'm going to call you every hour, you know, and, and if I don't call you, uh, would you would you send, uh, you know, a search and rescue, okay, or whatever, because I'm doing this open house someplace. And it could be right in the middle of, of a neighborhood. It could be right in the middle of a very busy neighborhood, you know, but all the door, all that has happened is the door gets locked behind you. So we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. So did you notify someone that you will be at the open house? How about the neighbors? Okay. So there's a secret to doing this. It's really kind of fun. Did you canvas the neighborhood? Did you walk through the neighborhood and knock on doors and invite everybody in the neighborhood to come to the open house? I mean, have you done that? What about your office? Is, is, did you tell people at the office about your open house? Okay, do you have it up on the board? Kevin's at this open house. He calls the office every hour to just check in for his own welfare, right? You know, don't count on other people to call you. You got to call them, all right? Did you prearrange a calling time? As I said a second ago, you know, Linda, I'm going to call you every hour. Linda hates it when I call her. But and, and and sometimes she she would never admit that, right? But but it's like you know why are you calling me now? <laughs> so I don't know. I like you. I want to talk to you. Okay. So anyway, did you prearrange a calling time? And and so I would have a calling time with with someone that that we had had that prearranged. And if if I don't call you at two o'clock, you know something's wrong. Okay. And so what I do on my end is I set my timer on my phone to go off every hour. Uh, so that, you know, that I'm reminded to make the call. You don't want to forget the call. If you told someone that, you know, something bad is happening, if I don't call you, you want to make sure you make that call. Okay. And so, you know, if you're with someone that's causing you anxiety, you just say, Hey, hang on a second. Your phone starts ringing, you know, starts going off and you just say, Hey, you know, something I've, you know, I've got prearranged time. I, I talk to people um, and let them know. And, Oh yeah, I'm here with this, you know, nice young man. You know, he's, you know, yeah, he's tall. He's about like five foot nine and, you know, start getting into, you know, things like that, you know, and, and they know that you're describing them to the person on the phone, they're less likely to become, you know, to do anything, okay? Um, that if you don't communicate at a predetermined time, they will contact the authorities, all right? Um, preparation. So let's get that walk list from, from CRS tax. This is one of the easiest things that you can do. I'm, I'm a strong believer in clipboards, right? I really believe in clipboards. I really believe it takes away a lot of the onus that, that people have about us as potentially as real estate agents. Now, I'm, I'm fairly unintimidating, right? But when I'm sitting in a room, you, you, you know, Linda can't stand it because you can hardly get, you know, through a conversation that somebody doesn't walk up and said, hey, how's the market, right? Uh, like I said earlier, I'm a walking billboard. So, you know, but my clipboard takes away a lot of the intimidation that I might otherwise have given to people, you know, because of the fact that uh, maybe I'm in real estate or something like that. I'm not going to sell anybody anything. I always tell them, you sell it yourself. You decide what you're going to do. I'm just going to help you facilitate it, okay? All right, question. Um, hi, Lena. Um, thank you. Uh, for our lady agents, we recommend we bring a discreet self-defense device. Um, we're going to talk about that, Lena. That's a, a really good question. Um, uh, and, if it, and if it's a big house, you, you might have to have more than one. Um, I think the number one way to protect yourself at an open house is to bring someone with you. OK, I think that is the number one way. The bad guys tend to travel in pairs. Um, and so if we're in pairs, they don't know what to do because most times there's only one of us. And I think that's just, you know, when I see a, a, an agent at open house, I don't care male or female. I don't discriminate either one alone at an open house. I just I just uh, it just upsets me so much because I really think it's important that your own safety is important. And I don't care how big you are. I don't care, you know, uh, you know who you are. You know, and I'm you know, I do Israeli Kung Fu or something. I, you know, I don't care about any of that stuff. I care about whether or not, you know, there's, you know, it's kind of like what, when we hire a bouncer at a bar, it's always a really big person. Not because we, we want them to get into a fight. It's just because we want to stop the fight before it happens. And so that's why I want to have two people at the open house. But I'm going to talk about that. You know, should you have, you know, bring a mace, bring a taser, bring, you know, listen, I, I don't know. You'll have to check with the local law on, on uh, whether or not you're even allowed to protect yourself. I'm sorry, translate that to can you carry a weapon? Um, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, especially San Diego as close as we are to the border right now, that we might have some issues in, in protecting ourselves. So again, I think it, there's safety in numbers always. Um, but, you know, can you bring devices 
uh, I'd probably, you know, check again with local law enforcement about that. Um, frankly, you could even talk to local law enforcement, say, I'm going to be open, you know, holding this house open over, over here at this address. And, you know, you would just stop by every couple hours and do a wellness check on me. They'll do it. I mean, that's what they do. Right. And they, they like that because it tends to be a fairly less you know, uh, uh, commanding or demanding of their time kind of thing. So uh, great question, Lena, great question. You know, should you bring safe, personal safety devices, a foghorn, you know, something like that? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody let a fog run off in my presence. I'd probably take me about half an hour to get my nails out of the ceiling. So uh, good question. Um, let's get let's get our our walk list from CRS Tax. You can also get it from your your friendly neighborhood title rep, right? Where and they have they do this for everybody, whether you do business with them or not. So there's no SB 133 or, or RESPA violations, um, you know, depending on how you do it. Of course, I mean you you ask them. They've been trained on what they can and what they cannot do, um, and get that list and get it in a printed version. Version. And I'm going to put that printed version on my uh, clipboard. Again, remember the clipboard? So I'm going to put that on my clipboard before I, I start walking the neighborhood to start inviting people to the open house, okay? And and, and, and that information, have them, have them printed. I always tell them, have it in an Excel-friendly, you know, uh, CSV format, whatever, so that you can take notes on it, right? Um, and, and then, you know, you know how to adjust the columns. Listen, I'm not a big Excel guy. That's a Linda thing. Um, but Linda can prepare that for me if I need it. You know, find somebody that can prepare it. You know, I need a, I need a place for me to write down telephone numbers because I can't count them the ones that they give you, right? Uh, or, or, you know, uh, the little boy's name is Johnny. His birthday's on May the 26th. You know, a little, you know, reminder, send birthday card, you know, that kind of thing, things like that. And so this is just all the friendly stuff that we're going to be doing, because, again, I'm working my open house into my farm. That's what I'm doing. All right. So put it on a clipboard. I said that a second ago. Knock on doors and invite people to your open house. This is so important. Right. And why? Because nobody does it. OK, what did we do again? We go running into the office at 1.30, 1.45 to get our signs and we're back in the office by 3.30, 3.45. You know, there's that great big long two hour day. We're going to be miserable about being in real estate because we work for two hours. Right. So I think you need to prepare. And I think this needs to happen not the day of. I think it needs to happen the day before, maybe the day before that. So if your open house is going to be on a Sunday, don't just assume that people will see your sign and that they will come by, you know, if they just have a notion to go to an open house. You don't want that. You want people to come by because they want to come by. They intend to come by. So you knock on doors. So you, for, for at a minimum, you look at that. Remember that route that we charted to get to the open house? You're going to knock on every door, okay? And then, we, and then until you get all the way up to the open house and then go to the other side and go down the other side of the street and knock on all of those doors. Remember, folks, we are in a full contact sport, okay? So, you know, if you don't like knocking on doors, or whatever, and you're not soliciting anybody, so there's no, no soliciting to worry about, you're essentially just inviting them to an open house, right? Is that okay? Does everybody get that? And we're going to talk about those, those pin corners, right? We're going to talk about those corners where you're likely to want to put your open house sign, and we're going to talk about what kind of conversation are you going to have with those people. It's going to be very different than, than the other conversations that you're going to have with everybody, hopefully, along the path of how to get to the open house. You know, I, I think you need to be, you know, focusing on, on quite a few doors. I think you can do it really quickly. It's not like you're, um, you know, uh, you know, you're there only to invite people to the open house. You're not there to farm the neighborhood or do anything like that, okay? That way you don't upset anybody, you don't upset yourself. None of those kinds of things, but knock on doors and invite people. You, you need to do that. You know, your job is to get them to come to the open house, hopefully. You know, I've done, it was interesting. I was on a webinar yesterday uh, with some people in Virginia that were talking about open houses and, and they're doing a, a, a new home buyer um, seminar live in person. And, and the one gal was saying, she says, you know, I, I, I did that new home buyer seminar. Nobody showed up. And I'm sitting here thinking, here we go. She says, but I sold three houses off of it. And I'm like, yes. Okay. Why? Because it wasn't the seminar. It was the people you called to invite to the seminar. I've done this myself. I've had people call me up and say, yeah, I'm so sorry. We were on our way to your uh, new home buyer seminar. We really wanted to learn from you. And I'm sitting there thinking, no, 
nobody came to that seminar. And I've sold three houses off of those things. Okay. So, so the open house is kind of the same thing. It's that preparation that you do. We spend a lot of time on the before, right? Because once I get into the during, I have a lot of stuff I'm going to do that because I don't want to waste my time at the open house. Right. And then even on the after, we're going to talk about what happens after the open house that'll, that'll increase your, your chances of success. Okay. All right. So knock on doors, invite people to your open house, focus on the corner properties, anywhere that you plan that you would like to put an open house directional sign, you need to talk to these people and you need to ask for permission. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But everybody who answers the door when you're when you knock on the door, making the invitation round again, maybe this is on Friday afternoon, maybe this is you know Friday, you know four to six, whatever. You don't spend the whole day on it, right? Uh, and then or maybe on Saturday before a Sunday open house or Sunday morning early before the Sunday afternoon open house. You know now we're starting to think, wow, this is I'm putting more than two hours into this. I'm putting like eight, ten, twelve hours into this. And and then my whole goal here, of course, is to make this a productive open house for you. That's the job. OK, so give everybody that answers a written invitation. All right. I had a, 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 a Kylie Campbell, a gal that used to work with us uh, 25 years ago. You know, she would put, you know, she would put little holes in the little, little card like this, put a little hole in the corner, put a little piece of lace around it, tie a Hershey's chocolate to it. Right. And then and then she would knock on the door and she would hand them the invitation when people answer the doors. People do still answer the doors, believe it or not. Right. OK, the worst thing that ever happened to us, you know, in, in our business was that the electric garage door opener thing. Right. So that people don't go to their front door so much anymore unless you actually ring the doorbell or knock on the door. It, it's okay. You're not soliciting any business. You're just asking them to come to the open house. Okay. All right. So that's what she would do. She had a lot of people at her open houses. All right. Be sure to use social media. Okay, so uh, and again, you know, my my full experience in social media, I've done the the the, the stuff that's you know, really really popular, and I find that it wasn't productive at all. So what I do is I'm going to do, you know, yeah, you know, we're going to do it at least you know days before the event, not the day of the event, because by that point people have already made plans, right? Maybe it's on uh, any of the sites I'm showing you here. I'm more focused on LinkedIn because it's a business site. Um, uh, Instagram, maybe I'm finding I get better news out of Instagram than I get at any of the networking stations that are out there. This is how I'm going to do it. I, I don't use the other two. I don't use Tweaker. I don't use Facebook, you know, but that's just my choice. But but you do whatever you're comfortable with doing. But something else I want you to think about is put it in the MLS as an open house. So let's take a look. I want to show you a really cool feature of your MLS that a lot of people aren't even aware of. Let me see if I can pull that up here without hurting myself. Okay, here we go. I'm in Paragon. Okay, so, you know, fortunately, I pulled all this stuff up before we started today so that I would have it ready for you. But see, this is my listing input. So if, if you are the seller's agent, you want to go to the remarks section. Here's the remarks section. And then when you get down here to advertising remarks, you have 510 characters. I'm going to hover over that question mark to the right of it. That usually means I'm going to give you information about something. And why am I doing this? Because what you put in the advertising remarks goes out on the internet next to the picture of the person that paid to claim that they're the seller's agent, that they're the listing agent of the property, right? You ever wonder, you know, how come, you know, you, you go to Pillow and Gulia and those websites and, and how come, you know, somebody else's picture shows up next to your listing? Well, they're paying money to be there. I know. I, I used to do it with the UT. I'd have these you know, I was one of four tile ads and $750 a week. And so, you know, that kind of thing. And so I just found in my experience that while it wasn't really productive, I wanted to look for an opportunity to make it productive for me. And so when advertising remarks came along, and I remember uh, Ray Ewing, who was the president of Santa Corps at the time, came to me and he says, this is the new thing we're going to try. What do you think? And I said, uh, hey, I like it, right? Because we had all these people you know, profiting off of what we were doing um, in, in our business. I, you know, I did a lot of time and energy to become a listing agent. I don't need somebody else from Iowa claiming that they're a listing agent. So I'm going to hover over the question mark again. So this is rule 12.5.1. Advertising remarks, advertising are intended to be included in listing displays on those third party aggregators and the syndicators, right? And are considered public remarks, which will be disseminated
related to third parties through what's called a RETS feed. You don't need to know what that is. Participant and subscribers may only include the physical characters of the property, listing agent contact information. You can put your contact information in here, okay? Including phone numbers, email address, website information, open house information. So you can put all that stuff in here. You have just blown this all over the world of your open house. Do you see what I'm saying, everybody? Nobody knows about this. I mean, I, I teach this part of listing input and, and it's like nobody uses this. And it's just kind of funny to me because you have such great opportunities. Okay, you, you, you may not uh, uh, use the advertising remarks for purposes of conveying information about another office. In other words, don't disparage another agent, please. You know, we've had people do it. That's why it's in there. Okay, so um, um, or transaction or stuff like that, no confidential information. But uh, and, and then, uh, unfortunately, I can't see it from my screen. I think you can. Uh, let me see here. Can you see it? Um, it, it talks about the, where this where this information is going to go. OK, I love this stuff. And like I said, nobody's well, nobody, you know, our whole office uses it. OK. And so, in fact, in ours, it starts off with, you know, please contact official sellers agent and then our name, our phone number, our email address, more pictures at branded tours at, you know, that kind of thing. So this is a great opportunity for you to advertise the property that you are holding open if you are the seller's agent, okay? Now, if you also, if you're the seller's agent, see over here on the left-hand side, add, edit, open house. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to pull up. See it now below is add, edit, tour. That's the one that you share with other real estate agents. But this is the add, add edit, the open house. I'm going to put that in here as well. And I talked to Steve Fraioli, who is a, a good friend of mine, who is our, our current president of the MLS, uh, about uh, the marketing efforts that we're making, you know, by you doing this, the marketing that we're going, that we do to market your open house. But this is where you put all that. Is it going to be a live stream? Is there going to be a URL? What date are you going to have it on? What time are you going to start it? What time are you going to end it? You know, what, and this is really simple stuff, right? This is, again, if you are the seller's agent, or if you're not the seller, agent can you contact the seller's agent and say hey you know i'm going to be doing that open house for you on sunday do you mind putting here's a copy of the information that i think would be really good in that section okay and when i'm looking at my my uh, advertising remarks section let's go back to that i'm going to close everything go to remarks and I go to my advertising remarks, I got 472 characters left. You follow me? There's a lot of good stuff you can put in there, okay? So that's why I wanted to call this to your attention because I really think this is a great way for you, for you to get that, that marketing out there about that property, okay? Is everybody okay with that? All right, uh, let me uh, take us back to uh, hopefully where were we? Um, here we go, okay. So um, put it in the MLS as an open house. So we talked about that. Uh, utilize extensively the advertising remarks. And if you want help with that, send me an email. I will help you with it, okay? It's one of my favorite things. I, I, I love the advertising remarks. I was glad when they finally did it, okay? Um, broadcast it to your database. Don't forget to send it out as an email or, or whatever, inviting your friends or, or even your buyers, even if they're not looking for this particular property, Get them to let them know that you're still in business, you're still active. It's a it's an excuse to touch on them. It's an excuse to communicate with them. Okay, and so you know this is a good opportunity for you to send that information to them about the where you're going to be this weekend. Right. And so I got almost to a point in my career where I can't do that anymore because then we get inundated, you know, that kind of thing. Everybody wants to ask a real estate question. Right. OK, well, that's kind of my job. All right. Um, prepare your open house signs. And and as I said earlier, you know, not, you know, at one thirty, you know, for a one o'clock open house. OK, but prepare your signs. And I want to talk a little bit about that. All right. So make sure they are DRE and NAR compliant. OK. And so people say to me all the time, what is the DRE requirement? Well, DRE says that open house sign, that generic, in fact, we sell them at the board, right? At the association, that generic open house sign is not going to cut it, right? You need a sign that identifies that you are a realtor, who you are, your DRE number, those kinds of things. Now, the DRE goes back and forth uh, on, on whether or not they want yours and the broker's DRE number. I think they said on signs, you don't need both. Um, we just, the, the point behind it is 
the, the DRE just wants the public to readily be able to find you on the website. That's all. Okay. Um, and, you know, whether it's for a complaint or a compliment or whatever, they, that's the whole purpose behind it. And then CAR gets involved, you know, with trying to create the standard for things. And I think, frankly, they do a good job. And on the purchase agreement, I had a contact uh, the other day, uh, an agent that, uh, you know, is, is filing a complaint against another agent because they got the DRE number incorrect on page, on paragraph number two of page one. Uh, what our MLS was doing for a period of time was it was loading up the MLS number of the broker, not the DRE number of the broker. So things like that. Okay. So make sure, check with your broker. Are they DRE compliant, NAR compliant? Remember the NAR has requirements as well. You must identify your, yourself and your affiliation with your firm. Okay. All right. Um, plan their placement ahead of time. So remember what I said, plan their placement. You're knocking on the doors of all the houses in the neighborhood, but you're also knocking uh, specifically on the street corners where you plan to place your open house sign. Okay, so you're going to do your open house sign, uh, you know, everywhere. And, and why are you doing that? Um, you need to ask for permission. So I've had so many in, in my years of doing this, I've had so many experiences where, you know, the, the agent, you know, put the open house sign through the sprinklers, you know, things like that. Um, and, you know, that's just a call we don't like to have to get. So, you know, and, and, and I, I'm going to tell you something. If you ask for permission, you're probably the only person who has ever done that. And, and so people like that, right? You, you say, would you mind terribly if I put your, uh, you know, put an open house sign? I promise not to go through the sprinkler head. Do you mind showing me where that might be? I'll, I'll clean everything up, kind of like we've gone golfing and we're going to clean up the green a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, would you mind showing me that and, and get them involved in that? They are never going to forget you for that, right? So they're, they're going to remember you forever. I put that in there because I just, I was thinking about a couple of these that I've done where, you know, we became great friends. They still talk to me, you know, things like that. You Years later, never did sell my house, but they're great, you know, bird dogs for me in the neighborhood, that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm going to ask them for permission and, and I'm going to make a big deal out of it. And I'm the only one that's ever done it. I've had the reverse happen. I had I had one happen where, the, uh, you know, an agent put the uh, sign in the the, the, the the family that owned the property was gardening and they put the sign in the yard without asking permission. And the and the guy that was the, the uh, you know, owned the house says, you uh, you can't put that there. And of course, the agent somehow, you know, went crazy about it. And so next thing you know, you're getting a complaint, you know, because, you know, the agent is rude, but it's like, you don't have, you don't have authority to put that there. That's not the, the, any kind of an easement on that property is an easement to the city or the county. It's not an easement to the, to, you know, real estate agents. Okay. So, but those, those property corners tend to be really important for us for directional purposes. So I would advise you ask for permission. I think the answer is you're going to get permission. Okay. Um, and even, even if you don't, you made a friend, whatever, um, you know, go to the, go to the other, other house across the street and, and ask them. Okay. But, you know, and again, folks, listen, you know, our business is sometimes a business of rejection. If you get a no answer, then what do we do? You know, we're the energizer buddies. We just move on to the next question. Okay. That's what we're going to do. All right. So, uh, and, and be nice about it. Is everybody good with that? It's been a, a really good uh, PR thing for me and for, for our company. You're going to return later, by the way, and give them a gift card. Okay. And so, and I don't care what it is. I, you know, I know that some of the coffee shops are changing their MO for their buildings and stuff like that. I, I understand that, you know, the big, the green one now is changing it so that you don't sit down, you know, because they have people camping out in, in, uh, in their facilities, but, you know, Bottom line is everybody appreciates a little $5 card. I mean, how many corners do you think there possibly are? Let's say there are six. It costs you $30 to put to give five coffee shop cards away, whether it's the, you know, there we have a whole bunch of them in Carmel Valley that are different makes and models. And so, you know, that little $5 card, you know, I, I don't know if you're hurting for the five bucks, give me a call. I'll, I'll show you how to make five bucks. Right. But, you know, it's, it, it means the world to the people. I used to do the same thing whenever I would uh, want to hold an open house. I remember down in Palacio on the uh, south of the 56. I would pull up to the guard at the front because I planned to hold my open house there uh, that day. 
And of course, I knew that the place was just crawling with realtors, right? Uh, all of whom thought it was their neighborhood and nobody can hold an open house in here except me. And they, and they threatened the guard and stuff. I, I go up to the guard, I pull up and I say, hey, I found this on the street. You know, this is for you. Oh, really? Well, thank you. And then I say, you know, I'm going to be doing an open house in here today. Uh, do you have, is that okay with you? Right. And so, you know, nine times out of 10, they would ask me for a stack of flyers and I would give them the flyers and they would hand them all out to people as they came in, look at their hand them out to realtors. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was really funny. And then I, when I left, I would just thank them again. I wouldn't give them another card. Right. But I would give them a card when I first got there. Those are the people who give the card right away. The other people give the card after you're done, okay? But uh, but but I got more than one friend at a guard. In fact, I sold a house, uh, C Bluff up in uh, Lucadia, made friends with the guard at the front door, and and uh, we're you know I sold him the house on Thanksgiving Day of all things, right? His only day off. So uh, you know, give a little thank you card. It's okay, and it can be anything, right? I mean, you know, a million different places where you can you know Amazon gift card. I don't know whatever those kinds of things, okay? Um, and invite them to the open house. You know, make sure that you remember what you're there to do, and that is to make friends, and you want to invite them to the open house. Remember that the more signs you put out, the more traffic you will get. Now, I had I had an agent working with us up at, uh, at our Temecula location, um, and and this guy put out 500 signs, and and so he got to a point where he had to have 30 agents with him at the open house because of all the traffic he was getting. Okay, and so. I used to ask him, I say, well, where do you go with the signs? And he goes, well, I just put them on every corner and, and, and but I lead them in from like major freeways. Okay. And, and, and I said, freeways. Wow. Like, like the interstate eight, you're up in Temecula. Are you bringing them up from the eight, you know, but he, he would do that. He would put these signs everywhere and people would drive by. They would think he owned the whole neighborhood because, you know, he was spent a lot of money on signs, you know, but a lot of those signs was less money than it would have cost to run an ad in the paper. Okay. So, but he would do that. He would just get all these open house signs. Um, you know, again, I, I probably, in retrospect, I'd probably want to look back. It was 20 years ago, uh, whether or not he was still compliant, you know, with those signs. Um, but, but again, bottom line, is the more signs you put out, the more people you get. So the theory is for every sign you put out, you get one client, okay? And so if he's putting out 500, well, then he's getting all these people coming through his house. And that was one of the reasons he had to get other agents and he would hook them up for referrals. And he would say, okay, if you get a client out of this, you know, you're going to sign an agreement with me that says that you're going to give me a referral fee on anything that, that uh, you know, you sell out of this open house today. But he didn't place me swarming with people before the customers even got there. Right. Because why? Because he's there and so are 10 other real estate agents. All right. OK, so the more you put out, the more traffic you will get. You need to put out a minimum of 20. All right. And I know people are always like, well, let's see, what is the how many do I have to put out? Well, you got to put them on the street corners. Maybe you need more directional ones. I mean, I've had it happen where I put mine on a street corner and then I come back later. There's no traffic and I can't figure out what's going on. There it is on the ground. Why? Because somebody else put their sign up and they didn't want my sign interview. OK, you need to check on your signs, too, or have somebody else that will check on it for you. OK, um, now is not the time to be frugal. Your DRE compliant open house signs are probably the best market investment that you will ever do. All right. I think they really are. I think you should spend some money on that. Lead people in from the major intersections. Okay. All right. And so, so this is what I, I said to you a second ago, we're going to move from before, and now we're going to move to the, into the perspiration. So we went from preparation to perspiration. This is the during. Okay. Remember that MLS rules require you keep the key in your possession at all times. So this is a blanket rule across the country. Now um, it used to be in the old days, we we would uh, take the key out of the lockbox. We would put it in the. We would open the door. We would leave it in the door so we wouldn't lose it. Right. Um, problem was, you know, sometimes we'd go back and the key's gone, and we're like, "Where'd that key go?" I'm pretty sure I left it in the door. Well, the bad guy took off with the key and went out and made a copy of it. Right, that kind of thing. Or else they're planning to come back later on, and you've got a, a Sunday locksmith coming by the house. You're gonna pay pretty good money for that. Okay, so so uh, remember, the key belongs in your pocket all the time, and it is an MLS rule. All right not left in the key lock, direct the customer. So I, I don't want people coming into the open house and then you saying, make yourself at home. Uh, 
you know, let them go and wander around. I've had agents say to me, well, I don't want to bother them and I don't want to appear like I'm hovering over them. No, they're there to see that. They're not there to pilfer, right? They're there to see the house. And so the expectation is that you will spend time with them at the open house. You don't have to say it, here's the bathroom or here's the kitchen. You don't have to say those kinds of things because those are the obvious things. What I'm doing, I'm not saying anything. I'm asking a lot of questions, right? Because I've got you. You came into the house and, and now you're a captive audience. Is everybody okay with that? But I want you to direct them. And the other thing is I don't want you to lead them, okay? If you are leading them, you could put yourself in a, in a dangerous uh, personal uh, danger uh, safety situation, okay? So direct them from behind, so, you know, keep your back to the door, remember the exit, all that kind of stuff, right? Rather than leading them, okay? I was on uh, the NAR's committee for MLS Safety Task Force. So, you know, it's kind of an important thing, all right? Um, you might want to limit the number of visitors in the property at a time. So lean all, so a lot of this, nothing, nothing has anything to do with weapons, but, but limit the number of visitors, sure. Somebody comes into the open house, then maybe I lock the door behind them. And then other people are going to come and you'll have a sign that you'll put up that'll say, you know, come, uh, you know, uh, sorry, we're showing the property right now. Be done in about five minutes. OK, and that way you're spending time with the people. You don't have the second group coming in, wandering around, you know, that kind of thing. And that's good for your own safety as well as the safety of the property. OK, so maybe you might want to limit the number of visitors in the house. I think it's a good philosophy. And again, this is going to be dependent on how many people you have at the open house with you. So if you've got other people with you at the open house that are working with you uh, in showing it, then you can you know, gauge, you know, OK, we got three parties in here. we got three agents in here. Now's the time to lock the door, that kind of thing. OK, all right. Uh, consider staggering the visitors. OK, and again, that goes with the locking part. Lock the door behind each entrance. Probably not a good idea to serve alcohol at the open house. And so um, let me pull some of this. I pulled up a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to show you, but, but this is one of my favorites is serving alcohol in an open house. Now, you don't need to be a lawyer, in my case, a recovering lawyer. You don't need to be a lawyer to know that, that you know, people drink uh, and sometimes they don't know how to control their intake. OK, and so, you know, here's a really good quick guide by the California Association of Realtors, and I'm happy to plug them because they do so many good things. It's just we can never find this stuff anywhere. So I've saved all this stuff I'm going to show you today, um, and I will send all of it to you. But this is a really good um, you know, uh, article. Do I need the broker's approval to serve, serve alcohol? The answer is yes, <laughs> you do. Is an ABC license required? Okay, ABC, here it is. They wrote it out for you. I, I did it in my PowerPoint, not realizing that it was in here as well. California uh, Department of Alcoholic Beverage and Control, ABC. And, and I know because I ran the Chamber of Commerce uh, in Del Mar for a few years. And, and I can tell you, we had to go get an ABC permit every time we were selling alcohol, right? So whether you're selling it or whether you're giving it, you need to be safe. You need to make sure that like it says right here, if the open house is in fact open to the public, then absolutely. Um, I would have a caterer um, and, and they're gonna have, a, have to have an on sale license. Trust me, they know how to do that. Um, and then a, a type 58 catering permit. So you don't think this is you know, a process? It is a process if you're gonna be serving alcohol. What preventative me uh, measurements can be taken to limit liability? You're not going to end the liability. We call it host liability, okay? Host liability. You're the host of the alcohol. Somebody drives off the property and gets killed or kills somebody else, right? Are you are you uh, checking ID? No minors are present. Things like that, okay? Uh, so uh, can you serve it without uh, with a license? Only the private party exception. So you all know if you've been to any of my pitch sessions, I always have the the thing up there that that uh, you know you may not mention alcohol because at our open houses we didn't allow it, and and uh, certainly with uh, the various association of realtors have not allowed alcohol at the open houses because they don't want the liability. Um, even though you're not doing something for them, you're you're still doing something under their umbrella, so to speak. So um, clearly, no sale of alcohol if it's a private party exception, um, and uh, uh, may not be open to the general public, which you, you have such a hard time controlling anyway. So, uh, and then, and then, so anyway, I'll send all this to you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, questions. I came across some agents not even bothered to say hello. Isn't that, isn't that a shame? You know, how many times you know, have I gone into an open house and the agents asleep on the couch? It's like, you know, really? I mean, if, it's that, if it was that rough a night, then maybe you shouldn't be doing the open house in the first place. But, but you're absolutely right. I mean, that's our own etiquette. Um, and I've got some articles in here on open house etiquette and things like that. Um, 
Some say the agents were uh, just giving visitors space. That's not true. You have an obligation to protect the property um, as well as to protect yourself, but you have to protect the property and, and letting them wander through people's personal items. I don't care if the house is vacant or not, right? Because on a vacant house, open house, they're in there unlocking windows so they can come back later. You know, as I'm not, I'm not trying to be a cynic about things, but you know, I just got enough of these phone calls, right? Um, uh, alcohol rules for broker caravan, uh, check with the association on that. I'm going to tell you they pretty much don't allow it. Um, you know, they don't want it under their, you know, associated with them at all. And, and I know people do it. Like I see it in the ranch, you know, you got, you know, 500 people at a place. Why? Because you said margaritas would be served, you know, that kind of thing. I get it folks. Um, you know, me personally, I, I, I can't drink, you know, certainly during the day, as most of you may know, I, I'm a sleepy drunk. I literally get one drink, I'm out for the count. So I just fall asleep. So you'll never see a DUI attached to me because I, I didn't make it to the car. So I just fall asleep. So so it's a built-in safety mechanism, I think. I, I, I like it. But but again, check and, and clearly make sure your broker's aware of it and whether or not your broker's going to sign off on it. I don't know, right? But but uh, anyway, I have the quick guide for you, okay? All right, so it's available. Lena, thank you for your questions. Good questions there. Um, i got a couple of things I want to show you about what to have at that open house. Um, but anyway, uh, so probably not a good idea to serve it. Remember the host liability issue. If it's open to the public, you may have to get an ABC permit. This is where I put all that in there. If it is for realtors only, I would have it catered um, by a group that knows when to cut it off and that also knows uh, that they're going to ID people in the first place. So, uh, yeah, I know you have to have a real estate license, you know, have to be 18 years old to have a real estate license, but I'm, I'm trying to think of when the drinking age is in California, right? So you certainly don't want to be taken in for contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And if you're serving alcohol to minors, you're going to have some serious side effects on that, okay? Uh, you don't want that. That's really bad, okay? Um, remove all of the flyers. We're going to get off of that issue for a second. Remove all the flyers from the brochure box outside the house. Why? Because you know, they'll pull up in the van, they'll have the five-year-old run over to the open house flyer box and take all the flyers out of it. And then they'll, and then they'll get back and now they have everything that they need to know about the house. They don't need to talk to you, right? They just want to know how much was it, okay? Because they have everything else. They see the open house sign, they see the, the flags and the balloons and all that kind of stuff. And you went to all that effort to get people to come to that open house. And then you leave the flyers outside and give them the one piece of information that you really wanted them to come to you to get, right? And so, you know, even when they come in, I take all the flyers out of the box. In, in our open, in our, I'm sorry, in our houses, we have a brochure box. It has one flyer in it. It's laminated. It says, oops, sorry, someone got the last one. Please send me an email. I'd be happy to send you a flyer or give me a call. I'll mail one to you. But you know, what am I doing? I'm getting that contact. I just got tired of going into you know open other people's open houses and seeing my flyers lining the bottom of the bird cage, right? You know, so the birds can poop on them. Okay. So, you know, it's like I didn't do that. You know, but but you know, I put 50, 50 to 100 flyers in the box at night. 50 to 100 flyers are gone the next day. Um, yeah, you know, I get tired of spending that kind of money. So, you know, bottom line is little laminated card that, you know, the size of a flyer that says, oops, sorry, somebody got the last one. Please send me an email. I'm happy to send you a copy of the flyer. You know, folks, you want them coming into the house. Okay. And frankly, I don't even sit in the house. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So remove all the flyers from the brochure box outside of the house. Remove all the flyers from the brochure box inside the house. Why are you giving people flyers? They, they, what do they do when they get a flyer? I mean, how many times you got to do an open house and, and you give them a flyer? What do they do? And they just, you know, head down and locked. They're not paying any attention at all to what you're saying. You're asking questions. They're ignoring you. They're just scanning this document for information that they want to know. How much is it? You know, how many bedrooms? You know, whatever, that kind of thing. Okay. So again, I don't think that the brochures are going to do you any good. In fact, I find in my experience, and I always say, don't hand out flyers at the open house. A lot of people use them as a crutch, right? So they become a crutch for the real estate agent, you know, to, to so because I'm, I'm afraid of, I won't know the answer to a question. You're asking the questions, not them, right? You need to ask them, you know, is this the area you're looking for? Is this the price range you're looking for? I had, we had them come in uh, at a house in, in uh, Del Mar that uh, belonged to my former business partner. We had it on the market for, uh, for uh, a million two fifty. 
and, and this couple comes walking in. And by, by the way, that was, you know, that was a heck of a price at that time. In fact, it was way overpriced, right? Um, and so and this couple come walking in and they go, you know, how much is the house? And so, you know, my partner responded, uh, it's a million two fifty. And and they said, Oh, and they put their heads down. And and so, you know what? She was smart. She turned to them and she said, What price range are you looking in? And they said, well, we can really only afford 750 to 775. Now at that time, that was like $5 million, okay? Um, but what? They felt bad about the price of the house. Now, if they'd gotten the flyer out of the front of the house, they'd have never come in, right? Because they had everything they needed to know that they can't afford that house. But, but she ended up selling them a house. And oh, I'm sorry, they could only afford 750. So they're both doctors. And, and they could only afford 750 to 775. But, but at the end of the day, that was a heck of a sale. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, we were just getting to where properties were priced over a million dollars. We were just getting there in that area, in the Del Mar area. Um, so we sold a lot of houses off that open house. I'm, I'm telling you, she, she, you know, she put it on the market really to attract buyers, you know, that she would end up selling other houses to. OK, so I guess it's kind of like a bait and switch. But but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's how much her husband wanted for the house. He didn't want you know, he wasn't going to take anything less because he really didn't want to move. Hey, you can follow your seller's lawful instruction, okay? All right, so I think they're a crutch and we always, we always have them in between us and the client. You don't want anything between you and the client. You want, you want hi, how are you? Okay, my name is, all right? And, and I'm wishing I'd put this in print. My name is, give them a first name and a last name. Why? Because then they're inclined to give you a first and a last name. But if you don't give them a name, then they're not gonna give you a name back, right? I mean, you ask them what their name is. So, you know, she would say to them, she would say, hey, my name is, you know, so-and-so. And, and, and then they would just look at her and she would say, and your name is? Uh, and, and then they would say, well, would really rather not say. And then she would say, can I buy a vow? <laughs> it just, it broke the ice. Everybody became great friends after that. Maintain your sense of humor, bring your sense of humor to the table. But you know, that was her, that was her crushing line. That was such a great line for her. Can I buy a vow? I'm like, I asked her later on, where'd you get that from? She's, I don't know. I think I got it from you. <laughs> so Anyway, everybody's always blowing me off like I'm not helpful, right? So, you know, can I buy a vow? That was hysterically funny. But don't let that flyer be a crutch and don't let that flyer come between you and the client, all right? Real important concept. Have a form, a CAR form RA on hand. I think you should have a stack. And, and here's what I do. So, you know, I'm going to have in my open house, I'm going to have that RA form. Let me pull that up here for you really quick here. Um, the RA is the Realtor's Acknowledgement Form. And this is what it looks like, okay? And so I'm going to start, I want to sign things, okay? That's my whole day. My whole life is all about signing stuff. So here's what the RA form, this is page one. This is what it says, okay? And, and I explain to them and they, they look at why are you doing this? And I said, well, I need to disclose to you that I am a Realtor. Um, the law requires that I make that disclosure. And they say, well, nobody's ever done that before. I don't know what to tell you about them. I just know what the law says. The law says I must disclose my realtor status to you. Okay. And so here's what it says. And if I'm not a realtor and I say that I am, it's a violation of BNP code 10177. I mean, literally, I could have my license taken away from me. Or, or if I didn't have, a, if I wasn't a realtor, they could keep me from getting one. Okay. And they're going like, wow, I thought you were all alike. Okay. And then I show them page two. And page two is just, it's just the acknowledgement. Look, we haven't even updated it since 2006, all right? I thought this was a great form when we came out with it. It's my best closer in all of my buyer presentations, my seller listings. And then look down here, I'm the only one who signs it. So I came to this open house with 15 of these already signed and dated. And when people come in, first thing I do is I hand them one of these. I hand them a flyer about the house, I don't care about that, right? I hand them one of these, they go, what's this? I go, well, this is... I'm required by law to disclose to you the fact that I'm a realtor. Well, I thought you were all realtors. No, we're not. And, and there may be people like you may have, you know, an assistant or someone holding a house open who's not even a real estate licensee. Okay. So that's what the purpose is behind this form. All right. And so this is why I say to you, I would have, I would have a bunch of these forms available at the open house and, and be prepared to hand them and, and sign it and hand it to them. Sign it in front of them and hand a copy to them, okay? You don't need a copy, all right? But it's two-page. Print it front and back, that's fine. Save paper, okay? 
Then the other one I would have, I would always have the PVOH form, okay? So I think everybody that comes into that house needs to sign the PVOH. Why? Because I really want them signing things. Why? So we can get them used to signing things. And so, you know, the, the, this is a form created by the California Association of Realtors, the risks of visiting and viewing properties. And they're sitting there going, kind of a kook is this, right? What a, there's a risk? Well, yeah, we have recording devices in a property. You know, I've, I've seen the lawsuits where the where the buyer sued the seller and the agent because they weren't told that there was a recording device in the property. And, and you know, the seller was eavesdropping in on their conversation, the buyer's conversation with their agent, you know, on the negotiation for the purchase. And so, you know, unfair advantage. OK, so we came up with this form that says you need to be aware there are recording devices everywhere. I don't have conversations. You know, my brother, I was showing him property and, and, and he started talking to me about the, you know, about the, an offer while we were in the house. And I said, let's talk about that outside. And even outside yeah, issues, right? So like, like in Linda's house, you know, I've got cameras outside for her benefit. She won't let me have any cameras on the inside of the house or other than the nanny cam, of course, for whenever she's there and, and got the grandkid over, right? But I've got cameras outside the house. I can hear what you're saying. Right. I can hear you a half a block away what you're saying. So, you know, be be aware, folks, your, your conversation is not private anymore. But I want the visitor to the open house to know this. And I'm using this as, again, something I'm going to have them looking at that's going to take their mind off the fact that I'm trying to sell them something. OK, visitor safety, you know, watch out for, you know, slip and falls, things like that. Animals or pets, whether they bring their own or whether there's a pet there. All of my listings all say dog will bite. Right. I mean, if there's a dog. OK, because why? Because dogs bite. And so I want everybody to understand that it's a possibility. It's not just the biting. It's also allergies and things like that. OK, uh, I was in a doctor's office the other day and they were talking about about, about, no, it's a physical therapy. Uh, and they were talking about um, one of the therapists there had an allergy to cats. And so they had this one gal patient that came in who had cat hair all over. Well, this person went into anaphylactic shock. I mean, they literally had to zip her and, and, and call an ambulance because you know, she stopped breathing. So, you know, those things happen. So you need to make people aware of that. Okay. And if they have one, if they have an allergy, they'll, they hopefully will let you know, but, but you need to disclaim your liability for any of that accompanying a minor how many times you got an open house where the, the you know five kids and they all go to the four corners right it's like oh keep track of your kids right well i don't need to say that i'm going to hand them a form before they come into the house that says you need to watch your kids right you break it if they break it you bought it you know that kind of thing okay you're responsible for them and then and then risk of injury you know things can happen okay so isn't it a shame we have to say all these things but i'm going to do it in writing it's kind of like when we read you your rights right it means a lot more because now you're going to assume the risk okay and so the only person that signs this is the visitor if you want to give them a copy, fine. I believe in giving a copy of anything anybody signs, give them a copy of it. But I want this one in my file, okay? This is not my guest register, by the way, okay? This is just my property visit and open house advisory. Is everybody okay with that? I'm going to go ahead and close it. Again, I will provide you with all these forms. If you want them, just send me an email. I'm happy to do it. Uh, I, I've got some other really good ones. Tips for holding a safe open house. Um, safety first from realtor.com, 10 tips for holding a safe open house from NAR, right? Open house safety tips for homeowners from Travelers Insurance. I've, I've researched all these things. I have copies of all of these for you if you want them, okay? So just send me an email, say send me your packet, okay? Uh, let me see what else. Uh, seller's property uh, showing checklist, safety checklist. Talk to the seller. Here's, you know, listen, Mr. And Mrs. Seller or tenant, right? You're in the property. You know, please do not leave the the, the money clip with the five hundred dollar bills on it or whatever. You know, you know, exposed on top of the countertop. I've gone into open houses and seen money clips, weapons, uh, loaded weapons, um, pictures that I kind of think you might not want to have had up there at the open house. Um, and so I tell them all that. And we had a tenant file a claim, you know, that their Rolex was stolen, right? R-O-L-E-C-K-S Rolex. And I don't know how much you need to know about Rolex, but that's not how you spell Rolex, right? So we kind of figured they didn't have a Rolex, but, uh, you know, personal information, stuff that's on the refrigerator, all that stuff. So again, I'll give you all, you know, family photos, especially photos of children. You know, I hate to tell you, there's a lot of just weird things going on out there and, and you want to try to protect yourself and your client. Okay. Um, I already talked about open house safety. 
um, agent, agent's property showing safety checklists. There's a whole thing. Look at this, it says right here, check out your prospects on Google. You know, we always tell you, you pick up a buyer at the open house, you want to make sure you, you look them up, right? On more than one occasion, we've decided we didn't want to work with those people. Okay, all right. Um, open house uh, and model home safety checklist. Again, I'll give you all this stuff. Uh, and there's my alcohol one. So, so um, okay, uh, let me pull back up, uh, moving forward forward quickly here on the PowerPoint, have everybody sign that form. You have the RA out there, you sign in front of them, give them a copy. Then you have everybody sign the PVOH, give them a blank copy. They don't have to sign two copies, all right? Have an agency disclosure form on hand. I really think you should do that, all right? So agency disclosure, I'm hoping you all know what that looks like. Here it is. Wayne Bell, who was the commissioner, the previous commissioner said, we think you should have this signed at the open house. Why? Because it discloses the concept of agency. And you need to tell them if you're the seller's agent that you are not their agent, right? And so you wanna be making that disclosure, the concept before you ever write an offer for them. So he says, I think you should have this at the open house and I have to agree with him. And he made that statement before we came up with a new one and the new one's even better than the old one was, all right? So I think you need to have that open house uh, form, uh, you know, the, I'm sorry, the agency disclosure form at the open house. And again, now they signed the PVOH now I'm going to have them sign this one. And, and so now we're signing stuff. And if they balk with you on things, you say, hey, you know, the owner's requiring this, you know, because you've already told the owner that you that it needs to be required, right? And so, you know, this is just disclosing the concept of agency. If you look at the top of the form, it doesn't say contract. It says disclosure. Everybody good with that? Okay. All right. Uh, so I, again, I think that's a form you need to have out there um, uh, during, the, during the open house. Have the agency disclosure on hand, have it completed in advance, sign it in front of them, give them a copy, have a buyer representation and broker compensation agreement on hand. Whether you're, you're feeling comfortable about using it or not, have one there. They're going to ask you, what is that? Um, and again, that's going to be this form right here. This is the new one. And we just did this class last Thursday, by the way, if you want to copy the video, send me an email. Um, but you know, I, I can't imagine anybody working with a buyer without one, especially after watching my video. Okay. So, you know, a buyer representation, uh, um, it's, it's what people used to call a buyer broker. There was no such thing, um, but buyer representation and broker compensation. You know, I'm really proud to tell you that I'm a broker in several States and I love to see what CAR does with these things. And then I see it starting to trickle down to the other States. So like in Virginia, you know, I tell everybody, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, a non-practicing lawyer and, and I tell them, you know, I'm just bringing you all the bad news from California. It's going to take a little while to get here. I think you got about 20 years, but, but anyway, I'm the advanced team of lawyers, you know, but that's, you know, that's just the facts of life is that, you know, we need to protect ourselves. And I think this is a great, you know, if you're not comfortable with the agreement, have it there, have it out on the countertop, forget about property flyers and stuff like that. But we're going to talk about that here in a second as well. So have that agreement on hand, complete it as much as you can in advance. Always, this is an NAR requirement and a DRE requirement. Always ask the question, do you have a buyer representation agreement with another broker? All right. And what are they going to say, especially in Southern California? No. What's that? Right. OK. But that'll give you an opportunity to explain the importance of working with an agent that is committed to them rather than playing the field. Right. And so get get strong about that buyer representation agreement. But you must ask the question whether you're going to do it or not. You must ask the question. It is an NAR code of ethics requirement. The DRE requires that you ask it. If there are there are potential torts. That's a law. You know laws that you break by not asking. If somebody has a buyer representation agreement, like the seller's agents, one of our one of Linda's agents, they have a buyer. You know they they have a, a they they have the knowledge that you could possibly have a buyer representation agreement. And so if you start soliciting the client and they have this agreement. That's good. That's going to be called interference with contract. There, there are torts involved in this. All right. Okay. Uh, question. Um, how to introduce this form? The buyer just starts searching and looking. That's fine. Just say here it is, and and you don't have to push them to to sign it. Uh, they don't have a specific property in mind. I know there's no place on the form for them to put a property address. You know, so the, the idea is get them used to the fact that they need to be working with people. And so, again, I, I spent a lot of time today on the NAR website and, and the new rules that are coming down now from the National Association of Realtors. You're really just kind of stuck. You're going to have to get good at this. You're going to have to get good at the buyer representation agreement. You really are. OK, and that's NAR, that's DOJ, that's all these people. All right. CAR has an open house library. I thought I'd throw that in there. 50 bucks a year. All right. OK, uh, I think I'm pretty, pretty 
pretty much giving you the entire library. Um, insist on business cards from buyers, agents. People will come in and go, oh, I'm an agent. Oh, really? Okay. What's your name? Uh, you know, Bob Jones. Really? You know, that's funny. I don't I don't remember recalling your name and I apologize. It's probably me. Probably me. Um, can I get one of your cards, please? Right? <laughs> and, and they don't have a card. You might assume that they're not an agent, right? So, you know, what I do is I send my clients that are going to go around looking at houses. I send them a stack of my cards and I say, you know, you tell everybody you're working with me, right? And then, and then, and you know, they've got a buyer representation agreement with me. So the person that that's at the open house knows that if they start asking them, you know, start digging in too deep with them, they could be interfering with the contract. But always ask the buyer's agents, the hypothetical buyer's agent, can I have a card, please? Everybody's carrying a card, right? Oh, I don't have any more cards. Why don't you go out your car and get one, right? Okay. All right. Um, on the on the flip side, by the way, I always ask the client uh, for their card before I give them my card. Right, the customer, I should say, customer, because they're not client until they sign the buyer representation agreement. But at my open house, I always ask them for a card. It throws them right off key, right? They're they're all kind of like, oh god, uh, and they go reaching for the card, and now the gig is up. They can't deny that they have one because they've got one. But I'll get I'll get their card before I'll ever give them mine. And the reason that I do that is because if I give them my card, I'll never hear from them again. Okay, um, always have somebody with you at the open house. Remember, the bad guys travel in pairs. Do it for your own safety. I don't care who it is, but it has to be somebody that's going to remember the perk, okay? Um, and so it's for your safety, for safety of the property, handle a rush if any. Lenders are great for this, okay? Have a lender there. Listen, lenders are better closers than we are. They're more likely to get the visitor's contact information. They're better at interviewing and closing the client than we are, okay? Uh, they're going to get the client. I, I used to go to open houses. I'd never ask anybody for anything. I would just go to the lender afterwards and say, can you give me your list? Okay, and they give you the list because they're going to call every one of them, right? Okay, um, pay attention, learn something new, right, from the lender. And, and so we're going to talk about guest books uh, in just a second as well. Um, do not sit inside the house. I think that's a waste of time. I think that's very passive. You're waiting for the business to come to you. I think you need to be outside where the decision is made to come into the house. And so I used to walk around Carmel Valley Road. I had a listing right there at Sea Point. I used to walk in the road. I'd have my phone in my ear. And of course, I'm paying attention, obviously. I don't want to get hit by anybody. But, you know, I'm, I'm paying attention and I'm, and I'm and so I'm stopping traffic. OK, now. All right. I might be breaking some laws here. Um, but but, you know, I would always I was I was I would look at him. I go, hey, are you here for the open house? You know, do you have curb appeal? Right. Or we're also not going to come in. OK, so I make co eye contact with them. I ask them, are you here for the open house? And they say yes. They say no, whatever. If they say yes, well, come on in. Right. But if I'm inside the house, they're deciding before they go in the house whether or not they're going to go in the house. So they're sitting out there looking at the house going, uh, that shingles off a little bit or there's a six in the address or some weird thing, right? And so they're going to come up. Uh, not that that's weird. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. Um, uh, there's some religions that believe you can't have sixes in an address. So, um, but but you know, I, I want to make it so that the house is attractive, but I want to get them into the house. And so can, have you ever heard this, this uh, the statement that you can't judge a book by its cover, right? And they're looking at the outside of the house and they go, oh, I'm not so sure about this. Then they go inside and go, oh my God, I had no idea. I mean, you know, Linda's got a house, it's a ranch um, that she owns where literally you look at the outside of the house, my house in Del Mar, same way. You know, it's it, it's it's you know 800 square feet leaning to one side. It looks like it's gonna fall, and 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 yet you get inside. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, you know. So anyway, uh, question. Let me let me take a look here. Um, Alexander, hi. How would you recommend curb appeal if you're showing a gated community or condo? And, and that's and that's the secret. So now let me ask you a question. Because remember, I always ask the question. Um, it, I always respond with a question. So curb appeal. So a gated community. Well, already they, they are thinking that it's more secure than most communities. So I've already made that, as I said in the very beginning, I've always uh, I've already given the five dollar gift card to the um, to the gate, the, the guard at the gate. I've already made friends. Right. Um, so they're going to come out. They're going to look at the property. They already know a lot about the place. A, it's got a security guard at the front. B, it's gated. Right. Uh, C, probably a safer place if they've got kids or something like that for, you know, roaming around. Right. That kind of thing. Um, but but I'm not sure if I really understand the rest of your question. So uh, explain it a little bit. But uh, showing a gated community, uh, are we showing it or is it an open house? Because I'm going to talk about showings here in a minute as well. So um, the uh, a condo, same thing. It's got a security door. I'm going to be sitting outside. You know, I, I you know I had an agent that I was coaching in Scottsdale. Ugh. Anyway, she would hold open houses. 
you know, I, I, you know, two years, she hadn't sold the house. And I asked her, I said, you know, uh, you know, well, how do you, how, what do you do? And she says, well, I, I hold an open house. And, and I said, where? And she says, well, it's in this community, which I happen to know is a, a very heavily guarded gate community, right? Uh, it's got gates around, it's got guards with guns, you know, it's Arizona, right? The Wild West. So I said, well, how do they find you? Because she says, you can't put a sign up. Um, you can't put flyers out. You can't put a sign in front of the house that says this is open. She would sit in the house, actually lay in the house on the couch, watching the football game with the air conditioning going because she didn't want to get hot and the doors are locked. And it's like, she said, I said, how do people find you? So well, they find me. Well, the way they found her was that the, the guard at the gate knew she was holding one open. So they would always tell them, you know, hey, you need to go see her house. Right. Uh, and so, you know, I thought that was pretty funny, but but that was essentially how people were finding her. But she still never sold anything because she was she had sold things. But this one was not she was not in the market when the some people when the market changes, they just fall apart. And it's like, don't let the market, the change in the market have you fall apart. Learn how to adjust to the new market. We're chameleons. That's what we do. Um, so, you know, a, a condo, if that's your question, Alexander, a condo, you know, that's a secured condo, I'm going to be outside, right? I'm going to have the key to get in. Um, and, and that's going to be perfect for me because I'm going to restrict entrance. I'm only going to have one person in there at a time. Chris, I don't use cards. I do digital transfer. I know I had one of my agents uh, send me a picture or one of Linda's agents send me a picture last night. Cool thing, right? Um, I'm okay with that. Um, but what I would try to do is get theirs first, okay? Because the minute you give them your information, they're going to say, I'll, I'll call you, right? And they ain't going to call you, right? The, my, my father, God rest his soul, used to call them be backs. You know, well, we'll be back. And you go, yeah, sure you will. So, you know, I just kind of learned that, you know, early. But uh, the digital card, we have all these cool things that come out. And again, like I said, last night, one of uh, Linda's agents, who's just uh, really a neat guy, um, uh, did that, uh, showed, sent me a text message. I, of course, and I don't like texting. And so I said, what did you, did you email it to me? He goes, oh, no, shoot, I texted it to you. I know how upset you get. You know, I block people to text me. So for, for a lot of legal reasons. But anyway, so Chris, go for it. Uh, try to get theirs first. Okay. Um, I meant open house. So Alexander, uh, how would you remember if you're showing a, an open house? Yes. If it's a gated open house, then Make nice with the guard. Give them that that uh, gift card, the five dollar gift card. Um, hand them a stack of flyers. Do you mind giving these to people after they've taken your gift card? Because otherwise, they, they've just realized they blew it. Right now, they got to give you back the gift card if they're not going to hand out your flyers. So, um, and I've answered it. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Listen, I think this is fun. I love doing open houses. I, I just think they're a blast. They really are. I get a chance to meet new people, and and sometimes it can be really crazy. So make eye contact with passerby. And thank you for your questions, by the way. Great questions. Um, invite them into the open house, right? That's your job. Your job is to get them to come in. You want to corner them, right? So if you ever ever bought a car, if you ever bought, you know, you go to a car dealership and they have what they refer to as the box, right? And for those of you who have this experience, you get in there, you're, you're out there, you're talking to the showman on the floor, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Everybody's happy. We're laughing, all that kind of stuff. And the, hey, why don't you step into my office for a second? That's called the box. Their job is not to let you out of the box until you buy a car. And, and Linda, God love her. I remember when she bought uh, she bought a, a Ford in uh, in uh, San Diego, or actually we had to drive all the way up to Orange because she had some kind of a thing with a dealer up there. And I mean to tell you, they had her in that box for eight hours. I was in there and I'm looking at her and, and she was a master. I mean, you know, I, I think she felt like she was bumbling her way through it. But I mean, talk about a pro. I mean, she worked these people. They ended up giving her the car for, for less than what it cost them to buy it. Um, so, you know, that, how often does that happen? But when they get you in the box, they're not going to let you out of that box, you know, until, you know, not drink a water, we'll order sandwiches, you know, that kind of thing. So you need to be thinking about it that way. You need to be thinking about getting them into the box. Okay. All right. Have a guest register. And now I'm wishing I had pulled up my, my guest register. So we have a guest register. I'll send you a copy of it um, for a number of reasons. One of them is you want to ask people to sign it. And I've never been a big fan of guest registers, but I am certainly in the last couple of years, a big fan. Um, don't have a bunch of names names on there. I probably wouldn't use the one for the association. I hate to say it, but theirs is not um, uh, uh, compliant with the do not call registry. 
Well, it might be. They might have fixed that. So, so check with them. They, they always have good stuff. Um, but ask people to sign it, right? Uh, and, and, and I've heard people say, well, the owner requires it. And I think most people know that's a bunch of crap. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're going to put something down there on a piece of paper. So I've always filled it. You know, there's like four, uh, rent, four name places on a, on a page. And I've always filled in the top ones so that they know it's okay kind of thing. So I've got that. They get in there and they see one's already filled in. Oh, I guess it's okay. And then they'll fill in there and information. Just remember that you have to have the information on there that's that makes it compliant with do not call. And so that information on ours, at least, and I'll send you a copy, send me an email, I'll send you a copy of it, but uh, you got to ask for it, by the way, or I'll forget. But, but um, you know, uh, you, you know, by putting your telephone number on this form, you have given us permission, us or one of our agents permission to contact you, even if your name is on the federal do not call list, just because they put their name on a form, folks, does not give you authority to call them. And it does not constitute a business relationship in the last 18 months. So again, I know, you know, a lot of people that are on this call, you don't want to waste a lot of time. I think you're getting a lot of really helpful information here, but you do not have authority to call them if they're signing, if they're putting their name on a form that doesn't have that information. Is everybody good with that? And, and ours says us or one of our uh, associates, one of our agents. Do you have your buyer consultation questionnaire? Now, I'm really proud to report, you know, I was at the uh, CAR meeting in Sacramento two weeks ago. Um, and so there's that form called the BMI, which is the Buyer Material Issue Form. And I was talking to the attorneys about it, um, and they are changing that form and making it more of a questionnaire. Do you have a buyer consultation questionnaire? Probably the best questionnaire I've ever seen is uh, Irene Youngs, who was an agent, worked with me with the Rock people. Um, and she just had a great buyer uh, consultation questionnaire. Um, and she would literally sit them down in the office and they would just go through this for two and a half hours. And, and you know, I'd see her doing that. I'd look at these poor people and I go, oh my God, they really have no idea what they're in for. But they would never work with anybody else because they actually thought she cared, okay? And, and, and not only that, but they also felt like they might have to go through that same thing with the next agent, okay? And Irene, I love Irene. I, I had the honor of being able to speak with her again after 20 years, uh, and uh, she's just a super gal. Um, really good agent. Um, very uh, self-deprecating uh, humor, but I think she's really good at what she does. So if you have a chance, look her up, tell her I told you to call uh, and uh, see if you can get a copy of her buyer uh, consultation questionnaire. She's really, really good. Okay. All right. Um, treat everybody equally, please. Okay. Come on. All right. Treat everybody equally. Have, have a list of available homes in the neighborhood as well as homes that have sold recently. Now, this is really important. All right. Put them in a slip sheet. Do not have 25 copies. No, one copy in a slip sheet in a three ring binder. Okay, why? Because they will get legs. They will disappear. I mean, people do, they, they bring all this stuff. Why? Because they're afraid that you'll, you'll, the buyer will ask them a question. It's like, let them ask you a question. Here's a list of all the properties. Does any of these look good to you? Right? Have a list, you know, but have them in a slip sheet and then in the three ring binder and, and notice it's not, you know, one free one for everybody kind of thing. Otherwise they're going to walk off. Okay. And then all of a sudden you find you don't have your CMA list anymore. So again, this is going to require you preparing for this uh, open house. Again, put them in the sleep sheet. Do not hand them to people. Bring and do the real estate. This is during bring and uh, bring and do the real estate related things that you've been putting off doing. Okay, so so handwrite the thank you notes to the people you met while you were canvassing the neighborhood. All right, handwrite thank you notes to your sphere of influence, your SOI. You hear enough about it. <laughs> you have time now instead of you know oh God will it ever end you know that kind of thing. No, come on, make productive use of your time. All right. Don't be just sitting at an open house. So, you know, because because you have other things you need to be doing. All right. Hand write the envelopes. Do not use uh, put put postage on them. Do not use bulk mail. People won't open it. OK, so, you know, put a postage stamp on it. I've got I've got Christmas stamps from three years ago. I bought so many of them because they were like 36 cents a piece. I don't even know how much stamps are today, but they're all forever stamps. And I do. I write my little handwritten notes and I put a stamp on it and I send it. And, you know, people call me up and they say, that was the sweetest thing anybody has ever done. You sent me a thank you note. And I thought, God, I thought everybody did that, right? This is what we used to do, okay? 
dialing for dollars, you're at your open house, call everybody you know and invite them to your open house. So I always say to the agent, how many people do you have in your cell phone? And they always say, oh, I don't know, 1,500. I go, really? They must be awfully small to fit in your cell phone, right? And so then they realize, oh, okay, that was pretty stupid. But, but you know what? You need to be calling people. That's your job, right? You categorize them in your database and then you call them while you're at your open house. Hey, I just wanted to give you a call, right? Your sphere of influence. Now's a good time to catch up, okay? I haven't spoken with you in a while. I just had a moment to catch up, right? So you don't want, you know, it's Brian Buffini. It's the, it's the mayor campaign, right? Brian Buffini's pop buys. It's like, you know, I, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time with people on the phone. I just want to touch base. You know, Ken, Cap, uh, Ken Kaplan, I love Ken, right? The buyer's agent, nobullagent.com. And, and he calls me at least once a year, just touching base. Now, I, I know I can tell when I'm talking to somebody, I talk to enough lawyers on the phone that I know when they're doing other stuff while they're talking to me. And, and But Ken is so good. I'm on his list every year. He calls me up. I just want to check base with you, Ken, see how you're doing. I've had him speak at my classes at the colleges, things like that. And, and, and it really means a lot to me. I'll never forget this guy, right? He was like the number one agent at, at the rock people, uh, the buyer's agent. He doesn't work with sellers normally. He only works with buyers. He, he, he's really good at buyer representation agreements. Um, so remind people what you do for a living. So your conversation with them on the phone is, well, I'm holding an open house. Uh, no, your conversation is, you know, when they ask you what you're doing, you say, well, I'm doing what I've always loved doing. And, and that is, you know, working with people, helping the buyers buy houses, sellers sell houses, things like that. I know it might sound a little cakey, you know, put it in your own words, right? But, but be sure you understand the value of your time. This is the whole point I'm trying to make. Your job is not a passive job. Your job is to get out there and talk to people, okay? Wear your logo apparel. See this? This is, this is every day. And by the way, it's not my only shirt. I've got like 30 of them in my closet, okay? I've got green ones and, and pink ones, and I have all black ones. I have all kinds of different colors, and I wear a different one every day, different color every day, so people don't think it's the same shirt. You know, versus Joe Jelly, by the way, who had 30 sets of suits, and they were all the same color. Blue, all, all military press shirts, uh, same, same trousers. He had the same clothes he wore different set every day but it always looked he always looked the same he always looked good he always wore a tie with a yellow stripe down it you know that kind of thing so he always looked good but you would think you would never believe you got to his closet you see all the stuff in the closet okay uh question uh what type of client management system would you recommend um i use i use outlook uh you know if you're if you're really great and you want to use access access is really good um, I use Outlook. It's fine for me. I use uh, uh, Google for calendaring only. I don't use their email products. Sometimes people send me emails. I won't get them for weeks, but, but I only use it for calendaring purposes. But if you're setting appointments with people and you want them to set your own appointment, use Calendly. You know, there's all kinds of stuff like that. But there's some really good CRMs out there. Um, and uh, I, I was uh, in a really good talk uh, yesterday with uh, Jared James, who I think is an excellent coach. Um, and he's affordable. He's free. Um, and he was talking to the guy that, that created the Wise Agent, which is a really good client relationship, customer relationship manager is what CRM stands for. Um, and I was impressed. I mean, I like Jared anyway. He's got, you know, good personality, although he does interrupt people a lot. But, but uh, he was talking to Brandon, the guy that created the Wise Agent. He's got a really good software program. He says, you know, I used to charge $9.95. And then today I'm charging, you know, uh, $49.95 a month. Brian Buffini's got a program. I think it costs at least that. Um, his is a really good program, constantly reminding you, did you call these people? Did you call these people? So these are really good things for you to have. Okay, Selena, I hope I'm answering your question. Uh, how do you recommend to, cat recommend to categorize it? Um, don't get too crazy. Um, Eric Elegato used to do all of his in, in the contacts feature of, of Google uh, in the notes section. I remember sitting behind him. He was talking to calling a client up and he pulled up the client's name while he's talking to them. And he sees all of his notes from the previous conversation. Hey, how's Johnny doing? I know he had surgery on his foot. Eric didn't remember that, but he, but he pulled the client up and he had written little notes in that section. So whatever you use, I would, I would make it client specific. Um, but if you're talking about a, a mailing list or something like that, then that's going to be a little more challenging than just putting things into a notes field. But I know people that categorize, you know, A time, B time, C time, you know, A clients, B time, B clients, that kind of thing. Um, that is right. CRM. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, good question. Thank you, Lena. Wear your apparel, folks. 
like I said, you know, I was teaching a class at Miracosta. I got down to the Vons on Del Mar Heights Road in Mango at, at God, it must have been 10 o'clock at night and there's nobody in the store. And, and so I'm up at the, I'm checking out and I'm, you know, pulling up all my stuff and all of a sudden I hear this voice and the voice says, you know, how's the real estate market? And I'm looking around. Well, it's the guy in front of me. I've been talking to him for years, right? Because he was always the night shift. And, you know, he started asking me about real estate. And it's like, how did you know I was in real estate? Right. Got the logo going on. Maybe I get to get that right here. It's over here. And so, you know, you wear your logo. People are going to ask you how the real estate market is. OK, wear your logo. All right. Um, which logo apparel company? I've used Queensboro, uh, Q-U-E-N-S-B-O-R-O uh, for many years. They've started to get a little bit more expensive, but I think they may be the least expensive out there. I think, you know, COVID was an excuse to make everything more expensive, but um, that's who I use. In fact, I've got to buy some more stuff. I've got people now asking me for shirts with my logo on them. So, all right, fine. I'll buy you shirts. You can walk around, you wear my shirt out in public and advertise for me. It's like, you know, it's better than advertising Nike or, or you know, Pepsi or something like that. So, uh, Again, remember real estate is a full contact sport. Um, so it's let's talk about the after. It's all about the past. So after, leave a handwritten note for the seller. Please let them know how it went. Even if nobody came through, you know, thank you so much for letting me hold your house open today. Uh, it showed lovely. Appreciate your attention to detail. Um, we didn't get anybody through, but we did a lot of great marketing. We're sure we're going to get a lot of calls on it. Um, as a result, like I said before, I've gotten calls off of ads I've run that that nobody showed up at the house, but I've sold houses off of it. And I know a lot of people that have done that. But leave them a handwritten note. That's just a courtesy thing. OK, we've got to remember to be courteous with people. And, and don't forget the gift card for the seller. Absolutely. OK, um, double check that all the doors, all the doors and windows. Right. So remember what we said earlier, sometimes the bad guys come back to the house through the doors and windows that they unlocked while they were at the house. And so you don't want that to happen because, you know, it's especially if the property's lived in and, and then people are, you know, in you know, their safety is it's a question. So when you retrieve your signs, right, uh, be sure to knock on the doors, uh, again, thanking them for allowing you to place your sign on their property. I think that's critically important. It's called manners. Um, so you ask them to put it there, you thank them for uh, afterwards for allowing you to put it there, and you give them the gift card. Now, we're not talking, folks, you know, again, how many corners do you think? Six, $5 card, 30 bucks. I think you can do that, right? I mean, your marketing doesn't cost you anything anymore. It used to cost a fortune. I was spending $30,000 a day for an ad in the Union Tribune. So, you know, I don't want to hear it, okay? I, I was selling houses, interest rates were 28%. I don't want to hear interest rates are bad. It, it's just an excuse. All right. Follow up with everybody. OK. Follow up with everybody who attended the open house. Telephone calls subject to the do not call admonitions. OK. Thank you notes. These are important things. I want to check really quick here to see if there's anything else. Um, I'll send, Like I said, I'll send you a copy of my uh, of our open house uh, guest register, but you got to remind me to send it to you. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I missed that I was going to tell you about. Uh, by representation. Uh, I think we got all that. Again, you should probably look at this and, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about this later, but I've, I've uh, loaded all of my, uh, whoops, oh, well, I did, didn't do that quite right. Uh, back to my PowerPoint. Um, I've loaded um, my PowerPoint, uh, my videos up onto my YouTube website. I'm going to give you the link to that in a minute. OK, um, but I've, I've been loading everything up there. My uh, web guy is redesigning everything so it'll be easy to find things, easy to get to. Um, but I'm going to encourage you to go look at that, uh, how to create the winning listing presentation. I just loaded that one back up again. I think I'm doing that one again next week. So I'll always load up the most recent version of it. Um, and again, as you can tell, I'm pretty thorough about what I do. Thank you notes. Uh, let's talk about showings really quick. So just showings in general, anytime you show a property, right? It's like holding an open house. It is a skilled event. So um, I'm trying to think of the agent who used to say, I'm not interested in, in uh, you know, going after people with a, with a chandelier. I want to use a laser, right? I want to, I want to target what I'm doing, not, you know, spray and pray kind of thing. Okay. So showing property, remember, always travel in pairs. The bad guys certainly do. 
by, I should say bad guys or gals, um, when showing property, set the mood, okay? Whether it's the open house or whether you're getting there in advance of a showing, every light in the house is on, right? Think about that model home. When was the last time you went to a new home subdivision? Every light in the house is on, air conditioning is going, right? Uh, even the oven light. I turn on the oven light, I turn on the refrigerator light. Now, by the way, you got to turn all these things off when you leave, okay? So again, I think it's going to take you almost two hours to do that, but it gives you something to do. All right. So even the oven light, I think, is so important. All right. Even the closet lights, all these things need to be turned on. Every curtain window covering is open. The fireplace is roaring. Make sure that it's OK with the occupant that you do that. Um, make sure that that's OK. Uh, air conditioning and heating at a comfortable setting. I've seen agents holding open houses where the air conditioning was set at 68, which is kind of the optimal temperature for people to be paying attention, right? You remember when you were in school and they didn't want it too hot because you'd go to sleep. At the same time, they didn't want it too cold or that you'd go to sleep. But I've seen agents have fireplaces roaring in five of the bedrooms and or five of the rooms and then have a, the air conditioning set at 68 degrees. Okay, I get it. Uh, most of the heat, you know, they're very efficient nowadays. They go out anyway. But again, check with the owner before you do all this stuff. Make sure that it's okay. Or the occupant, I should say. I said occupant earlier. Um, greet the customer at the door. I think you should be outside again, right? I would take a chair outside, right, frankly. But greet them at the door. Not, you know, Lena, as we said earlier, not while you're, you know, you're asleep on the couch and they got to wake you up. Or they come in and you go, hey, make yourself at home. You know, wander around, steal anything you want. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to cook for that. That, okay. Uh, do not wear sunglasses. I think that's rude. I mean, I, I get it. You know, I've got pretty good vision even at my age, but, but, uh, you know, I know some of us have to wear sunglasses, but, but, you know, how much time are you really spend looking into the sun and I'm allergic to the sun. So when I get outside and I burn within 15 minutes, I burn badly. So, you know, I'm, I'm constantly adjusting. Am I in the shade? You know, where am I greeting them so that I'm looking away from the sun, stuff like that. I would do a lot of, uh, of uh, television, um, you know, the news crews would come to me all the time for stuff. And, and I'm always, for some reason, I'm always staring into the sun. And it's like, why? Well, because they wanted to, they didn't want any shadows. And so it's like, okay, you've got a limited amount of time to do this because I'm going to be, you know, lobster red here in about two minutes. So uh, do not wear sunglasses. I think it's rude. Um, uh, even if you think it makes you look cool. All right. Uh, stand with your back to a wall when you're showing a property. Why? You don't want to block a view. I see this as a pretty common mistake. You know, you're you're holding an open house at a house that has ocean views and you're standing in front of the view window. Right. Like they don't want to look at you. They want to look at the view. It's the first thing they're going to. They walk in the front door. They go straight to the view. OK. And if you're standing in the way, you're you're an obstacle. You're not a friendly, you know, that kind of thing. They don't you don't want to block the view. Accompany the customer on the tour. We've talked about this a number of times now. Do not just let them go on their own. Think about the safety of the property. And I always say, you remember the opioids in the medicine cabinet? Right. And when I did uh, Channel 8, I did an interview for Channel 8 and they said, uh, well, you know, they were asking me about theft in open houses. And I and they said, you know, well, what are they stealing? And I said, you know, or where? And, and I said, well, you know, medicine cabinet, usually in the master. Right. And they said, well, what are they stealing? And I said, well, they're not stealing your cholesterol medication. You know, they're, they're stealing the opioids, folks. This is a disaster. And, and we've got it coming across the border without getting political about things. You know, people, kids are dying and it's and it really upsets me. But but, you know, it's it's so important that we protect people and they're breaking. They're taking these things out of the houses because they can sell them. Um, even uh, Sheriff Gore, I think the former sheriff at, in San Diego, uh, even said he said, we stopped giving them all this paint, you know, the Vicodins and all that stuff. We made them put everything together. He says, we get like 90,000 pounds of this stuff every year. He says, now we give them a Motrin. He says, but they were selling this stuff. It became a commodity, a, a currency within the within the prison system. And so, you know, these things are these things are, are more dangerous than you think. Let the customer go first. I said this before. Remember, you don't want to be trapped in the house. Think about your own safety. What's your conversation? Talk little. Now, I always get a kick because Linda says, you know, when when I'm doing a lecture, I'm, I'm 800 miles an hour every which way is Tuesday. Right. But when I'm talking to a client, you know, she says, God, I can't believe you're another guy. You're totally anti of what you were. You ask questions. I talk very little. I listen more. 
I ask a lot of questions. And that's what, you know, I'm not even allowed to talk to her for the first two hours in the morning while she's having her coffee, right? Because she hasn't woken up quite yet. By the way, waking up for Lynn is four o'clock in the morning. So I'm not allowed to even talk to her until 630 because she's really not awake yet. All right. And so, you know, why? You ask a lot of questions. I go, yeah, I know. I'm interested, right? I always believed that it was more important for me to be interested than, than interesting, right? I don't think anybody cares really what I do, but they do care that I care about what they do, right? So uh, the more that you listen, the more that they, they will think, oops, I'm blocking my own thing here. The more that they will think that you know. Uh, my business partner for 15 years, uh, she really didn't have a clue what was going on, but she would ask a lot of questions. And, and uh, you know, people would walk away from the conversation going, I can't believe how much your partner knows. And I go, yeah, well, I know. Well, you did all the talking. <laughs> She's pretty good about that because she knew she didn't know anything. So she would literally just keep you off your guard by asking you a lot of questions. She was really good at that, okay? Get good at that. It's an interrogation. Pretend like you're working for the FBI, right? You're interrogating people, okay? Um, be careful about puffing. It only applies to used cars, all right? Puffing is not, does not work in real estate. The department, the commissioner has come out and said that specifically. Exaggeration, you're going to get yourself in trouble, okay? Um, showing property the right way produces positive results, okay? And that's, so showing the property, whether it's an open house or whether it's showing properties to clients, those are the important ways that you want to do these things. If you've got any subjects, we're actually going to get done a couple minutes early here, but if you've got any subjects that you want to hear about, let, let them know. Let SDAR know. Send them an email, education SDR. I know uh, one gentleman uh, uh, the other day, I haven't had a chance to follow up on it, wants me to do a class just on agency. Um, so it'll probably be an hour long class, but you'll know agency, right? And again, I know agency probably better than anybody that I know. Um, and that includes a lot of lawyers. Um, and that's why they hired me to go in and do standard of care and things like that, because agency is critically, critically important. And you may be establishing that without even knowing it, um, whether you've got a writing or not. And remember, the commissioner's office says that the reason we have them sign an agency disclosure is so that you can defend the fact that you told them, right? There's The law says, and the law requires us to have all of our stuff in writing, but technically speaking, you know, if you were going to recite it word for word, good luck, right? Even I can't do that. But if you were going to recite it word for word, you still need to be able to defend the fact that you made the disclosure. And that's kind of the whole point. So we'll probably be you know, rolling in on a, a webinar on that uh, for about an hour, see what kind of turnout we get. Um, I think agency, uh, ethics, trusts, things like that. I literally did the NAR's code of ethics because now we require it every two years. It's going to be three years, by the way, after the end of this year. Um, and you're, you're doing that when you get your license renewal. So it works out okay in California. But, but uh, you know, literally, I was fascinated by the subject and I've been teaching and I'm a DRE uh, certified instructor uh, for SDAR um, on code of ethics. And so uh, I just love the way things change and it's constant. It's called job security. OK. Um, uh, and then I want to tell you about this. So um, I've been loading all of the webinars up onto my YouTube website. So here is the link to my YouTube website. I'm going to leave it there for a second. It's the case is important you must have the proper case. So it's bit.ly over here, shortcut link, forward slash Burke Real Estate Consultants, Inc. And the uppercase B, R is uppercase, E is uppercase, C is uppercase, I is uppercase. And that will take you straight to the video page. And then you can see all the videos, just click on the one you wanna look at, okay? All right. And then I've also discovered how to create a QR code. The problem with the QR code, of course, is that it goes to our website, not to the YouTube website. That's what the web guy is working on right now. So if you do your QR thing and, you know, I didn't even know what a QR code was and I learned how to make one and I'm so proud of myself, but I got to figure out how to make it go to the YouTube channel so that you can see the, the, the videos rather than, you know, having to type in stuff. So that's the QR code. It'll probably get updated here shortly. Um, weekly email updates. Uh, so my final slide, really, um, if you if you're not getting these updates, send me an email. Um, and, and then and again, my signature line says click here to subscribe. If you want to uh, send me an email, I'll just send you a, a the subscription link. Um, but I don't put people on this unless you ask to be put on it. I, my, I have a ton of people on my list and they are all opt-in people. They were all people that wanted to be on it. So I, I'd like you to be on it. I do. I discuss a lot of really 
pertinent real estate related issues. And I give you the direct link to get into the web in, into the webinar so that you're not going through the page that says, you know, sorry, your class is sold out, that kind of thing. So, so uh, any questions on anything that we've discussed today? We've discussed a lot of material today. Does anybody have any questions on anything we talked about today? No, seeing none. You've been a great audience. I really appreciate you all being here. I mean, I, I can't see you. I know you can see me, but uh, um, I very much appreciate the value of your time this early on this morning. I know it's getting, it's lunchtime um, and I know you all got to get going, but uh, um, I do very much appreciate you being here. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to be doing the webinar on property management. I've added some stuff to it that wasn't on the last time I did property management a couple months ago. Um, again, this webinar will... Um, They've got to go through it, take out all the nasty language and stuff like that. And then I'll, I'll post this one. It usually takes a couple of hours. So I usually get to it by the evening, but I will post it on the uh, on, on my YouTube website so you can get to it. Currently, by the way, that website is free. Um, at some point, I'm going to figure out I'm going to charge like five bucks a month or something like that, um, just so that I know that people are getting value out of it. But, uh, you know, a lot of people don't take it seriously unless they're paying for it. So uh, but currently it's free. So anyway, uh, if there aren't any other questions, I want to thank uh, Lena, certainly, for some great questions. Alexander, thank you, Chris, uh, for some great questions today. I very much appreciate your feedback and your input. Uh, and uh, you can see how it helps me spin things in, in a direction that's important to you. I want this to be of value. So, so anyway, if there aren't any other questions, I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, I wish you the very best. Remember what I always say, if you look good, you make me look good. I really want you to look good. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to make it today at two o'clock for the uh, property management webinar. And until then, uh, as we say from my hometown of Del Mar, I look forward to seeing you around the track. Thank you, everybody. Take care for now. Bye-bye.